right, and this one here. What is up, Friday Nighters? Uh, welcome back to another episode of Just Another Friday Night. Um, we are, uh, I'm CM Chuck, if you didn't know, and this is Adam and TM Adam. We call him Double A around here. What's up, guys? Um, guys, we were kind of trying to try. We were kind of trying to try. <laughs> yeah. Just trying to try to fucking speak is what I was trying to do. Uh, we always see people go live, and what they do is they let their live run for a little bit while the audience builds. I've seen uh, several podcasts where they – uh, or even just influencers, TikTokers, like our fr our friend uh, uh, Funny Nene uh, at Funny Nene eighty nine on on TikTok. Um, Sorry, which is not sixty nine. Which is I know. Which is just a uh, Nene Andrew Edward Benitez. <laughs> if y'all don't know, uh, Andrew uh, uh, is Nene. It's just Nene. Anyway, that's a lot of like that. But uh, anyway, he lets his run for a while until he builds up an audience. But they also have a a. a the people I watch have a much bigger following that are watching live than we do. So I don't know. Do you guys think that it would be beneficial for us to let the video run a little bit longer before we start talking? Or should I just not do that? Or Yeah, people like us to just hang out with them. So. You want to just hang out? Just we can just hang out. out. Yeah. We can drink hang beer. Out. and Or, you know, we could just uh, – you can ask us questions or something like that. I don't know. I don't know what you guys think. Uh, give us some feedback on that. Um, let us know what you think about the colors too. We can always change the colors in the background. Uh, we'll go straight to the comments. Uh, Steve. Steve is in the house. What's up, Steve? Steve, cheers, cheers, Steve. All right. Um, well, I don't know. I feel like we're already rolling, so maybe we'll. Uh, <clears throat> Steve says, "I like the way you do it now." Good. Well, I'm glad. I'm glad, Steve. I'm glad you like. I like the I'm way you beg, boy. I'm glad, you, <laughs> I'm glad you dig it. Uh, Jason, Jason says, what's up, what's bro? Up, what's, it, what's up, Jason? What's, is the what's up, bro, one bro or two bros? Hey, Jason, have you been to the new comic store at Traders? Uh, the one that uh, David, I think it was David, little David. Yeah. Uh, Rad Comics, over. right? Yeah, Rad, Rad Comics. Comics. Have you been there? Uh, let me know uh, if you have been. Uh, I want to check it out pretty soon. Uh, it's been a while since I've been there, you know, yeah. like looking around. In the in what we would, we would call uh, the... Uh, the the post Mario Renaissance. Yeah, so yeah. we definitely got to like get I out went, there. But it, it was to me uh, Ray Park, so I didn't actually like go right. out, you know, and explore the area, you know. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So. Um, I haven't been either. I don't think since the Mario days. So I'd like to go out there and check it out. What's up, Anthony? We appreciate you uh, oh, being here, uh, man. How you doing, uh, Anthony? Just, what's up, man? We we're just talking about your boy Nene, man. How he lets his videos run a little while till the audience builds up. Uh, should we do that? You think that's good for us? We don't have the 500k like he. Yeah, does. we can't wait for a hundred people, or we'll never get. You there. know what? I see. Him, <laughs> I see him start a video, and in a minute, it goes from yeah, 50 to 150 to 200. And it's like yeah. shit. You know, I mean, we're not doing those numbers yet. So, but maybe you guys can help us. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. But we do like <laughs> our ecw style kind of like fan base I yeah mean, totally here, you know? man totally we, we do have a loyal fan base here or if you've ever yeah. seen the movie uh yes man when uh the the band uh zoe de chanel's band is playing and and uh, jim carrey goes to see her her band is called munchausen by proxy oh, but okay. she's like give it up for rodrigo and, and jeff and, <laughs> and and lily it's like three the same people that are yeah. out there it's pretty cool but no we definitely dig that man we appreciate that yeah uh jason how 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 is that comic book shop is it cool is it does he have more updated comics i guess you can say instead of like the key issues that mario did uh how was it yeah uh, i'd like to know too uh give us your feedback yeah. jason on the new shop rad comics aaron b in the house aaron, what's up my brother what's what up man? aaron b up? uh what are you doing man you hanging out uh tonight are you getting some brewskis are you getting some uh 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 libations as they call them Aaron have you had any new burgers uh you know what me uh let me tell you something Aaron uh me and Jack we've been having like a little thing that we do uh uh kind of ranking the chicken burgers ever since Papa came out with their like their chicken sandwich like everyone has really stepped up their chicken sandwich right uh you know I I still think Popeyes is number one I think KFC's is a really strong number two and I think Burger King really stepped it up with their chicken burger their chicken's fucking fat I went the other day and asked for it they were like we're out I was like okay it, you're it's out a fat burger. Like, all right. uh, go to one or reach me oh okay yeah. that one okay yeah. all right uh, I'm check it out and I don't go to Burger King that often because I really no hate but that it. chicken burger is 
big. Yeah, it's a big piece of chicken. These guys eat so many chicken burgers, Aaron, that we got a, a, a friend of ours, a personal friend of ours, asked us, can y'all do a just another friend yeah, on that's chicken right. burgers? That's right, yeah. And we were like, that doesn't really fit our... Uh, uh, I said, <laughs> I said it had to be a segment, and it had to be with Aaron. Yeah, we could do a segment, yeah. you know what I mean? Like a pop... It doesn't really yeah. fit pop culture. I said, I guess maybe if we did like fast food restaurant tie-ins that it, had it tie-ins. To be something. You know? It had to be like a crossover, so... Um, Anthony says he's good. Jason says it's okay. Okay, all right, okay. All right. It's hard. Mario has big shoes to fill, he, so yeah, that's that tough. Was... Um, I'm wearing I'm wearing my glasses, guys. I don't always wear them. Sometimes you, I need them to type. Um, Man, I can't. I didn't even know that was you, Sam. Yeah, I know. This, <laughs> this, this, these are these are supposed to be anti glare, and I noticed that I am picking up the ring light in them, so I, think I, I mean, might I might the take ring light's them off. really powerful. Yeah, I mean, it helps me to read when I read Josh's comments. I'm trying to I can see, but it doesn't always fit with whatever I'm wearing or whatever. So. In my opinion, uh, Anthony says Nene is a batch. Yes, he is. Nene is a is a, a batch for sure. <laughs> uh, CM, we had uh, this was, and I always forget. This week is always like a big week mm -hmm. of events. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. May third was uh, Bullet Club Day. That's right, That's Bullet Club Day. Just always known as Bullet Club Day now. Too sweet. Y'all are part of the Bullet Club, yeah. uh, SA Bullet Club, yeah. as we like to call ourselves. Uh, but what a go. group, you know, started by, you know, Prince DeVic, Finn Balor, you know, Finn Baller. 2013, you know, a long I time met him. ago with uh, very nice guy, Carl Anderson with, yeah. uh, oh man, I Doc forgot. Gallows. No, 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 he wasn't no, in the not original. Dak, uh, right? Not Doc. Uh, 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 Tonga. Uh, Tama. Tama Tonga. Tama. Yeah, Tama Tonga. And uh, Fale. Uh, bad Luck Fale. Bad Luck Fale. Right. Yeah, Bad Luck Fale. Yeah, yeah. the origins, of, you know, it was a group of foreign heels you know, kind of destroying New Japan, you know, all the Japanese wrestlers. That was a really cool concept. Very influential uh, wrestling group, you mm -hmm. know, very, very influential. You know, the shirts, I mean, man, those were the hottest shirts selling since, like, the Austin 316 shirts. I know? absolutely agree with you on that, man. Yeah, I have I mean, several. I have – it's, it's – those are like the first non WWE yeah, shirts of yeah, wrestling I bought. Yeah. I think you know what I mean. So uh, yeah, that was straight New Japan. A you fucking kick ass looking logo. Yeah, like one of the what a great logo. As as the gentleman that co created our logo, um, Justin Martin uh, uh, said, uh, "It looks hella tough. <laughs> it does, <laughs> definitely looks tough, yeah. man. The Bullet Club logo is no bullshit." So. Uh, yeah, totally. And then, uh, you know, we had uh, May the 4th, which has really become yeah. huge. You know, we had May the 4th. And, yeah, May the 4th be with know, you all. And Revenge of the 5th. That became something, which is also Cinco de Mayo for, right. our, you know, a lot of our Mexican listeners. Which know? is not our Independence Day, guys. No, no, no. It's a celebration <laughs> no. of a victory of a battle. Uh, a huge battle over the French, mm -hmm. I believe. So We kicked some major ass. Um, and then uh, now people are saying also Revenge of the 6th. Yeah, oh, uh, and wow. they say because always two there are, and then I also heard people say, "Fuck it, let Star Wars have the whole month." This the whole is the month. May. This is the May. This is yeah. the May. So that's pretty badass. Which I wanted to kind of share some news too. So like this past week, this past weekend, if you seen our post, I went to this uh, thing called the Alamo Hero Con. Very small con, but I didn't even hear about this. We I, didn't even talk about it. Yeah, yeah, because I, I found out pretty late, but I was like, you know, I told my wife, you know, I was like, I really want to go to something like this, and it's centered around uh, Supernatural, which uh, I'm a big fan of Supernatural. Mm -hmm. It was about, you know, um, Samantha Smith was there, who plays Mary Winchester, the mom. Uh, Kim Rhodes, who plays Sheriff Jody Mills, who becomes a huge character in Supernatural. And then uh, Emily Swallow, who plays Amara, uh, God's sister on the show. So it was going to be like a huge thing, and uh, you know, I have this. I have bought this really early on. It's it's just a really cool prop, and I had them sign, and I was going to have all three of them sign, which they did, uh, except for uh, Emily Swallow. Uh, I found out she was the armorer from the Mandalorian, and so I was like, oh, I got to get that because she became one of my favorite characters in the Star Wars lore. Yeah. So. I said, if I can have this, and she put two Adam, this is the way. Yeah. And I just, like, creamed my pants when she put the, this is the way, you know? I was like, golly, I love that. What so a much. great signature, too, man. Yeah, Big, very clear. clear. Very, very clean. clean. Yeah. I mean, we both love that when it's a good-looking signature. Yeah, so. so uh, very cool. So that was a very nice surprise, awesome, you know, awesome. to meet uh, Star Wars, a Mandalorian. That was my first Mandalorian Star yeah, Wars very you know, cool. figure. So. And just you and your wife went, right? Just yeah, 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 yeah. Quick walkthrough? Very quick. Cheap very, to get in? Or? Yeah, yeah. Five? Yeah. Uh, 
that day was like only like 20. Okay. So, I mean, it's not bad. To yeah. get in. Yeah, to get in. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Oh, yeah. that's still cool. That's not too bad. Depending, no, it's you know, a, it wasn't. It's all about what you're going for and what you're trying to get and who you're trying to get. And that. what, it, I mean, you didn't even know. So, what is so total surprise? You're like, holy yeah. shit, you're the, you're the armorer? Well, like, armor. That would have like been I, I just, I fell in love with that character. I thought that was one of the coolest characters. Yeah. My you know, sister created. has a pretty cool uh, brown t shirt. I think, yeah. I just don't know who got it for her. It was a gift or whatever, but it's it's of her. It has her helmet on there. It's the and, armor. And it was cool to see him because she was like, um, "Do you want the? Do you want me to put the helmet in the picture too?" And I was like, "Fuck yeah, put yeah. the helmet in there and grab that helmet." I want to see the pic. Yeah, yeah. Man, that sounds so badass. I was like, "Yeah, put the, Hell you know? yeah, I do." And so she had the helmet like next to her. I was like, "Fuck yeah, it's armor." Come on, <laughs> it's like now. the recent uh, Henry Cavill quote, whatever he goes, uh, "I still have the cape. The cape is mine. It's in my closet." I'm like. That's badass. You, you know, speaking of Henry Cavill, you know, those rumors are just swirling around that, you know, he might be leaving. It's just crazy that Warner Brothers will let him go. It's like, golly, this guy's still young, still fit. He can be Superman for another 10 years. Oh, yeah. The best Easy. Superman we've had since Christopher Reeve. Yeah. Now, but know. then, you know, it's pissing me off because people wanted to play like Captain Britain. And no, then I saw Wonder trash. Man. I was like, no, are you fucking kidding me? Also trash. That's like a big downgrade from Superman. It's like, no. You no. don't have you don't have a, a an, I would say he's an A-list actor. Yes. Playing well, a, a like a DF list character yeah, in Marvel, like Captain if Britain. Yeah, if you're gonna get that guy over here, number one, him being Superman casts such a long shadow, right? Double A. Any that, any character after that would just be a huge step down. Yeah. Honestly. So if you're gonna come to Marvel, you're gonna have to play somebody. Big, hey, you know, I was trying know? to think who who's kind of left. Mm -hmm. I was like, who's kind of left that's big? I was like, it'd be cool if he was Black Bolt, but oh, but. But no, it was he, talking, no talking. Yeah, so, um, <laughs> you wasted the bot. That was kind of my first one. I was like, okay, well, everyone else is taken right now. And I was like, okay. also too under the mask the whole time, right? They never yeah. show. They, they, it's really rare. I've never has. seen Black Bolt with really that. Really rare. Yeah. Uh, and then I was like, well, maybe the Surfer, but I was like, I don't know. I don't know about Surfer. Um, that would be interesting to see. Interesting. And then yeah. a lot, you know, I was like, then a lot of people said Wolverine. I was like, I can get behind yeah. Wolverine. Yeah. I can get behind that one. We're, right when I, I right when we you put it in the Friday Night Faithful group, I Googled it and I was like, somebody had to put this together. And sure enough, I found several images. But you know what? Like, he has that right funny. look because Wolverine's not supposed to be like a young looking oh, guy. What about this guy? I'm looking at a statue of right behind you, Prince Namor. Man, that might be a pretty you know kick what? ass role. Namor would be perfect. That would be fucking perfect, actually. Because we had that talk, we we're like, who would you cast as? And Neymar? we didn't have a good answer. Henry Cavill would be perfect. That would be pretty man, perfect. He's man. already fucking ripped. And what did we know? throw at each other too? Again and again, that's a great role for him. You see his face, you see yeah, his body, which yeah. are, you know. And Neymar's like very arrogant, very uh -huh. you know uh -huh. out there. You and know? again, if you guys want to see that side of Henry Cavill, like we say, watch The Witcher. Because uh, I've heard, I've, well, I've heard the dude's kind of arrogant in real life, which I I really don't care about. Really? I, oh really? That, that's just what I yeah. heard from. You know certain people but i i don't care i don't know the guy I, i'm not friends with him so i really don't give a shit how he is he can be an asshole in real life i really could care less if i look like him i'd probably be an arrogant asshole too right, right? but so, from what i gather when i see his videos and i follow him on instagram he seems very uh, I mean, uh like i said i don't care humble, him, you know i i'm never gonna be these guys best friends i'm right. never gonna have a beer with them he's never gonna come to my house yeah you know and watch football i hope you know? he'll come and be on the just another friday night podcast that'd be awesome but i mean <laughs> you know again we're, we're just never going to be in this guy's right. league you know right. so i right. really don't give a shit about their personal life uh and then you put him as dr doom which yeah dr doom would have been would a cool be one. cool i mean him and john krasinski i mean that'd be really cool they're both about the same age i mean the you know john krasinski is big now too yeah you know? yeah he's, he's worked out a lot too so I don't know, man. I think we might have hit the nail on the head with, with Neymar, Neymar, though. I like I just, Neymar. I was looking at him right here. I like the bust Neymar. From Mara, and yeah. I, I think that because it, it showcases him the best. Because like we, like I kind of said in our comment about Doom, it's like people are going to want to see Doom as Doom. You can get anybody to do that. You don't yeah. need you don't well, need a handicap. But they've tried doing that and two times it's failed. So. Uh, yeah, yeah. So we, we we'll see. We would see. Definitely, definitely open to having Henry Cavill part of the Marvel family. I mean, like he's a Superman? great actor. Yeah, that's Superman, what I'm thinking. Yeah. I'm like thinking like wrestling wars. I'm like Superman over here at Marvel. Fuck yeah, that's fucking awesome. A few more comments came uh, in. Yeah, and then uh, he says, "What do y'all prefer, In and Out Burger or Water Burger?" I've never had In and Out, so I've, I've always stuck to Water Burger. I've had In and Out in California and here, and it sucked both places. Water oh, wow. Burger all the okay. way. There's, you, a, see, you know, what? I would like me. to eat it with you so that you could try it. 
people have told me it actually tastes better in California than it does here in Texas. I don't know. Wow. I don't think okay. so. I don't remember right. it being like I was like, oh, it blew well, my mind. I mean, and, and I'm water burger. So. Did you ever have Crystal Burger when it was here? Crystal, no. Okay, so no. it's very similar to what from everyone would tell me. They go, oh, that's just like a White Castle, like uh, that little bun with okay. a little. Onions. Okay. I think those are more tastier than wow. like In and Out Burger. Okay. It tastes In and Out okay. to me tastes just like a blandish, and everyone's like talks about the animal style, whatever, which is like. I think a mayo based sauce. I don't really like mayonnaise. I don't like thousand. Ah. I like Mac sauce on the Big Mac, but I don't eat Big Macs anymore because of the cheese. Yeah. But uh, McDonald's cheese fucks me up. <laughs> but no, uh, McDonald's meat just fucks me up. I don't think yeah. it's the cheese. Is I think it it's the meat? meat? Well, I can yeah. eat the homestyle burger. Okay. And it's I very. Can eat, I, I can eat any of the meat. Yeah. The any. homestyle burger is like underrated. That's like their best burger. Um, no, that their burgers are very tasty. Like the dollar yeah. burger is very tasty, mm -hmm. but it always just fucked me up. And it yeah. didn't matter what McDonald's it was. It didn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, like I said, after a while, I the stopped cheese eating. Just got I to stopped me. eating the meat. But, uh, <laughs> but, uh, uh, no, man, Whataburger is like, um, I think it's way superior. And there's like a lot of, I think Whataburger is. What you can prove that it's so good is because so many burgers kind of copy it. Like, yeah. there's like a lot of like yeah. when you go somewhere, you're like, oh, like Griff's is kind of like that. <laughs> and like Burger Boy's kind of like a water oh, is burger. It? Yeah, it's oh, like wow. the big okay. bun, like the okay. wider bun and like the, okay. the, the, the kind of the flat meat. You got to get like a double. You know okay. what I mean? If yeah. you ever had a, a hometown burger, it's it's like that too. It's kind of that style of burger, okay. you know, so which I mean is good, you know. So, Anthony, what about you? What do you prefer? Yeah, Anthony, which is which one's better? Uh, Jason uh, said he's still looking for that elusive Red Hope number 58. Now, Jason, is there a reason why Red Hope 58 is hard to get? Is something happening in that issue that we don't know about? Um, like, let us know because I would like to uh, to know. I mean, but uh, you know, hey, we're, we're out places sometimes if we ever see one, you know what I mean? Look yeah, and uh, you know what? I am going to be at a comic show on May 22nd at the Shrine Auditorium. Uh, Ekman's. If you guys ever heard that, that's like our for a long time. That was like yeah. our the the place to go when there was comics because so many vendors would go. I mean, man, remember the Live Oak? Yeah, the trips we would go to. Yeah, you know, the, at the Live Oak Convention Center yeah, it was great. It was we went so to all of them, like man. four bucks to get in. Yeah. Uh, now I know it's but a lot more. But. It, it is a lot more, but man, it was the place. You know, before we even had Comic Cons, you know, that was like the closest mm -hmm. we ever got. So. It was fucking great. So I'm going to be there. I'll, I'll look out for a Red Hulk uh, number 58. For Red me. Hulk number 58, Jason. We'll keep you in mind, brother. Uh, Steve says, uh, may the fifth be with you. Fifth of scotch. Oh, cool. Yeah, Steve, I'll be on my ass after that. <laughs> Steve, I'm, I'm not a scotch guy. I've tried scotch. I'm not a scotch guy. I think I'm more whiskey. Yeah, I've had scotch a couple of times, and uh, I do enjoy it depending on which one it ah, is. Okay. And actually having which one's your favorite? Now? Um, I had this one called Glen Mirage. Ah, okay, uh, and sure. it was really, uh, or I might be saying it wrong. I might be pronouncing it wrong, but that was good. But also, they did one of the Game of Thrones one was a scotch, and it was very, very uh, smooth. And uh, well, you know what? Uh, I take that back. Uh, Johnny Walker's a scotch, ain't it? I believe so. Yeah, yeah, I'm a big fan of Johnny Walker. Okay, Black Label. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that one, like, I know a couple of times I drink it with like ice, like before bed, and man, go right to sleep. So I have, tr <laughs> I have trouble sleeping. So, uh, for uh me, not it, for me, that puts me to sleep. I was gonna say, anything that, anything that helps me sleep <laughs> is, is, is right up my alley. So. Uh, yeah, when uh, my our buddies uh, <laughs> going away when he was living in Dallas for like a few years, uh, I got really fucked up on Johnny Walker because CM says you're not supposed to take shots of it, you're supposed to sip it. That's sipper, and, yeah. That's and, a sipper. <laughs> uh, I was not doing that, I was taking shots, yeah. I, I, mean, I mean, you can shoot anything, you probably shouldn't shoot some of them. No. <laughs> the last time I did that, so. Yeah, uh, let's see here. Oh, Jason says he went to go see the guy that played uh, Pinhead. And, uh, he was the first in line, oh, so nice. they made a new one, kind of like a kind of restarting. So that was pretty okay. cool. And I think he was at Toy Matrix. Oh, right on! Man. I think he was hey. there at the same time as Ray Park. Ray Park was over here, and then Pinhead was over here. So that's cool, Jason. That's did you get cool. something signed or anything like that, or did you get a picture? I would like to have gone and fucking Ray Park didn't take forever. So. Yeah, we heard that was the stories with Ray Park. Uh, great. Great as he as he is, uh, which we know. I, I read the things that people posted. They said he took time with every fan. So uh, he did, but man, you know, it's not him. It's the fans that just take too much time. It's like, come on, yeah, guys. come on, guys. You got to know when to know when to hold them and know when to fold them. Oh, you know what I, I mean? like that. So like, uh, the gambler, as I like would say there. <laughs> I think he says Crystal Burger was nasty. I didn't like it. Well, it's definitely not for everybody. They obviously didn't last. So that was, uh, you know, I think many people felt your way there. <laughs> Steve says it's Texas. So it's Whataburger. Throw up and the right? dub, the dub yeah. for the Whataburger. Uh, Anthony says he prefers Whataburger, hands down. I like this. The dub, <laughs> dub, like this. And then he says, here's a question for y'all Who's y'all's favorite little rascal, Spanker or Falco? <laughs> Well, you're not giving – that's not all the little rascals. It's just, just two out of those two. You know, it's funny, Sam, but uh, 
honestly, out of all of those, that era, that mm-hmm. comedy, I really only stayed with the Three Stooges, so I never really saw Little Rascals or anyone else. So I watched sorry. a little bit of it, and you know what, Anthony? I'm, I'm going to go with neither. Uh, they're both bitches, all about buckwheat, baby. <laughs> We're going buckwheat okay. on this one. Right. Sure. Uh, Crystal Sanchez is in the house. She says, whiskey every day. Cheers. Cheers, Cheers Crystal. Crystal, I still have that shirt for you, that red shirt. Are you still wanting to purchase that? Uh, <laughs> let me know. Uh, I got it uh, not here on me, but I have it at my house, and I can uh, uh, ship it out to you if you need to. I ship some stuff, some merchandise that got ordered this week, guys. I ship to Ohio, and I ship to El Paso, and I ship to Dallas, Fort Worth. So Look, I'm looking forward to seeing right. our stuff a little bit further from home. JFA uh, going here. national. There we go. There we go. Rich is in the house. Rich, what's up, what's Rich? Up, Rich? Cheers. Cheers. Cheers again. Cheers, brother. Uh, Steven asked me, am I a scotch drinker? You know what? I love Johnny Walker, so maybe, yeah. He is. He is. Yeah. <laughs> uh, then he says, Chuck, that's West Side. Oh, yeah, that's West Side. Okay. Well, Crystal, I got it. It is set aside. I just wanted to know oh, so that if not, awesome, that I can Thank uh, you. sell it. We definitely sure do. See you, we, we more are than more than happy and want to sell it to you. So um, let me know. Uh, speaking of T-shirts, guys, we still do have a few $20 T-shirts left. Um, this is not a $20 T-shirt. Uh, this is a hoodie that was special ordered by Friday Nighter Mario. Real nice. Uh, by yeah. Deuces Mercado produced this. We're getting that out to him. It's beautiful. But this is what the logo will look like on the shirt. Uh, I have very few. I think I mainly only have white left. Let me know what size you want, and I'll let you know what um, what colors I have left. I think all I really have left is a white with a red logo on there. Uh, if you saw Friday Night or Joe put one out, a picture out recently, I'm slowly getting together pictures. I'm asking yeah, everyone to- um- you know, one of our power couples, John and Roxanne, they posted them too. They were like, we didn't even realize we were wearing the or just in our Friday night shirts, you know. And uh they look, you know, yeah. awesome. Yeah. yeah. My running joke is that when I get 12 guys, I'm gonna uh I'm gonna make but a calendar. A calendar. So yeah. Yeah. Might be so we got we got Steve, we got John, we got Roxanne, you know, yeah. we got Joe, Joe, you know what I mean? You so, know, and so I got merch going out and I'm waiting to get pictures back on it. Yeah. So me and you have oh, to be the, the bookends. We have to be one yeah. in January, one in December. So well, what well, don't you want your birthday month? Really see, appreciate. I think I'm gonna go. I think I'm gonna steal September for ah, myself. Okay, but okay, we'll okay. see. And Jason said he got an autograph. Cool, Ooh, man. Awesome, That's awesome. Jason, awesome. Good stuff. Good stuff. I think we're nearing up on the 30 minutes, guys. Yeah, we, we, we have we've dragged too long here. Uh, let me say something real quick, guys. It's kind of if you're wondering about the shirt that I am wearing right now. This is from the Now Watch This podcast with a Lucky and Joe. It's a brand new podcast. Uh, these two gentlemen did not know each other. In fact, they met in, in person for the very first time last weekend when they recorded it. Well, I don't know if it was last weekend when they recorded, but I believe it was. Um, but uh, Joe is a fan of uh, Just Another Friday Night, as well as many other podcasts. Uh, he's a frequent contributor to this show. and We love Joe. And uh, and Lucky is also a podcaster. He is the host of the Dork Dad podcast. Um, he's had some great guests on his show, like Lilo Broncado from A Bronx Tale. Us. He also had the wonderful uh, <laughs> pop culture chef that is uh, competing in Hell's Kitchen. Right. I That's believe right. she's still competing, and she's she's pretty cool. Uh, her name is escaping me right now, so anybody knows it, throw it <laughs> out there. He had her on his show. He's done some artists that are uh, uh, local artists and, and uh, artists that are also not so local that are up in the Dallas uh, Fort Worth area. Uh, Lucky is a really, really great uh, podcaster. Um, he's got also his company, Three Legged Rabbit, who made this shirt. That's where I got this shirt. Uh, I ordered it. You can get it in different colors. Um, but I wanted to support their show, and they have asked me to come and be on their show. Uh, so I think that we will be recording that tomorrow. So I would like you guys to give them a like, a follow, and a share. Again, our show is can be long, uh, you know, but it doesn't not long enough for you to listen to all weeks. If you want to listen to something else, they've done three episodes so far. Their first one was on King Kong versus Godzilla, really good, solid episode. Second episode, uh, I really loved it, man. It was about a movie I'd never seen, Field of Dreams. Uh, they got me to watch it. I uh, got really misty eyed, like I tend to do, uh, and enjoyed that movie thoroughly. I had never seen it. It's a classic. I know everyone told me. Did you know the field still exists? Ah, no, you can I actually go and that. visit the field. Yeah, okay. this is some of the facts I got out yeah. of there show and they sell merch there with some of the lines on there and you, they say i think even at night on certain days in the summer uh some uh local ball club will come out dressed in the old timey uniforms and hang sure. out okay. so really cool cast james Earl jones um <clears throat> ray liotta obviously Frank kevin Boyle. costner yeah mm-hmm. yeah so it was a really really cool 
uh, endearing movie that I loved. Uh, thanks to them. Thanks to the now watch this podcast. And their last week was on Mortal Kombat and kind of video game movies, uh, which is really neat because they've covered a bunch of topics that we have not talked about and probably won't talk about. Uh, you know, so that's cool. So you can go get a different if you wanted. To, if you were asking us, hey, where's your Mortal Kombat review? I say, hey, go check out the now watch this podcast. Listen to uh, what uh, Joe and Lucky thought about Mortal Kombat and. Uh, there you go. That that's what I have to say about on that. That's their free plug, uh, guys. And by free, I mean buy me breakfast tomorrow uh, and maybe lunch, depending on how hungry I'm feeling. Uh, nice. Let's see. Who uh, Rich says Field of Dreams is an awesome movie. Totally agree, Rich. You should listen to uh, now. Watch this man with Joe and Lucky. They're really really good guys. Really nice. And Anthony says, uh, "What do y'all think of the Jake and Logan Paul situation?" Well, that situation just keeps escalating, right? Yeah, I mean. I mean... <laughs> Floyd seemed pretty pissed off about the hat thing. I was like, oh, I mean, you know, but that's what these guys do, right? They're yeah, YouTubers. They're, they do. You know, yeah. Floyd is a is a known showman. Uh, you know, me and CM have seen one of them. I can't remember who it was when they knocked out knocked out uh, Nate Thomas. Nate, Nate, Robinson. Nate Robinson. Nate Robinson. Yeah, we saw that. Well, one. I mean, Nate Robinson was a sorry. Yeah. I mean, that, you know, no boxing experience whatsoever. You know, that was he ran. Yeah, and he just clocked him. It was like almost like. Uh, who is that one from Mike Tyson's punch out? The one that would go like, do 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 do. Oh, uh, Ball just, Bull. Yeah, Ball Bull like, would hop down, down at like you. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it was pretty terrible. Uh, that guy does look a lot bigger than Floyd, as we all know. Floyd is a little guy. Um, that doesn't matter. Floyd would probably kick his ass. I, really you easy. know what? I gotta say, I really hope Floyd really does kick because his ass because Conor McGregor is bigger than Floyd, and yeah, yeah. And it didn't matter. Uh, you know, it's about boxing and when not it comes about to boxing you know, skills. There's not really a whole lot better than Mayweather, and I hate saying that. Yeah, because I'm not a Mayweather fan. And I tell people all the time, people that want Mayweather to lose, I'm like, what does it matter now? What does it tarnish his legacy now? The man's yeah. already 50 and 0. So, I mean, it doesn't really, you know, the legacy is already there, guys. Somebody should have beat him a long time ago or beat him several times. Like Canelo should have beat him. But, you know, honestly, you know, me and Sam have been watching Mayweather for a long time. Mm -hmm. and he's just, we just were never fans of the dude. You mm -hmm. know, the dude's a boring boxer. He's. One of those guy kind of like hits and runs, hits and runs. Yeah, so, yeah. You know, we never that kind we of never, side. Yeah, side. we never. So me and Tim never really got into. You know, yeah, but more I, power to them. We wouldn't pay for it. No, you know. But if no. somebody throws it up on their Facebook stream and they're watching it at their house, I'll, I'll watch the stream. Yeah, you know? I mean, even that, I won't probably do that. <laughs> I just, I'm not a Mayweather fan, honestly. I'm just, yeah, the dude's boring. He. His flash is great. The the the, you know, hype. the, the hype leading the up to it is yeah. good, but man, when you actually see the dude fight, it's it really it's, it's a snoozer, a real yeah. snoozer. Um, uh, Jason says, "Sorry to miss your last show. Don't worry, Jason. You can always listen to it anytime. It doesn't matter. Yeah, you can you listen. Don't anywhere. have to be here. You can watch it on YouTube, Jason. If you want to see the content, uh, we appreciate you when you are here live. Yeah, that's um, awesome. But you dude, know, yeah, we never... appreciate anyone when anyone's live with us. It, we know it's Friday night. We know you." Like to take your spouses out, you know. So it's cool that you, when you guys hang out with us. So, yeah, you know, it's awesome. Totally, man. And and we know that things are opening up now. People that are vaccinated. Too. Yeah, we might be missing even more of you soon because you're going to get back to going to the movies and yeah. things like that, which is yeah. great. Which or, we want to we want to hit to. You know, uh, yeah. we just found out Quiet Place too is coming out May the twenty eighth, and know? that's so, a great trailer. Yeah, right? so a I'm trailer. I'm ready for that one. So. Yeah, and we're fully vaxxed now, both of us, except for where we're. Probably in the weeks where it's so you're probably done. Oh yeah, I, I, need, I got I mine mean, like almost a month ago. Yeah. already. so mine was last yeah. Friday. You guys kind of saw me at the end of the show, kind of yeah, kind of hurting yeah, a little yeah. bit. Uh, I did get some effects the following day, or whatever. But I'm I'm totally fine now. I feel great. I'm happy to have it, and I got my I'm wearing my band, my fully vaccinated band. That's what it says. You can't read it, but um, yeah. So uh, guys, we're getting up on the thirty minutes. Uh, last comments there, double A. Yeah, let's read them real quick. Uh, I think he says, um, I think they both need their butts whooped. They talk too much. You know what though, boxing for some whatever reason, it's such in a big slump that they can actually use these two guys. Honestly, yeah. Yeah. I don't know what's going on. It's really hard to see boxing nowadays. Yeah, it, really it is. is. Yeah, you know now they have that streaming that dazzling or whatever right. it's called, and it's like. God, but what hey. about the premiere one? Has that one been any good? I've seen they had no, some names man. a couple no, times now. No. Oh, wow, that sucks. And then uh, Rich says, uh, "I hope Floyd knocks him out." <laughs> yeah, me too, Rich. I'm with you on that. Uh, mom is here. Hi, mom. Glad you're here. I think you might have put one of your little emojis. We can't see it on this format that we're on, but uh, we'll check but it out. It's always really cool when uh, boxing gets like a big upgrade when it is the focus point mm -hmm. of uh, the sports world. And that's what this fight's doing tomorrow. Canelo and 
Billy Joe. It's going to be at Texas Stadium. They said they're going to expect a lot of people there. So. Yeah, we'll be watching, and then we'll talk about it next week. If you guys want us to, we'll talk about that fight. But, uh, guys, we're right here at yeah, the 30-minute gonna... mark. You know yeah. what we do every 30 minutes? We take a quick break for our audio listeners. Uh, you'll hear a commercial. It's just the one commercial in our whole show. Uh, and then we'll get right back to uh, uh, talking about our topic for the evening, a really cool topic that I'm excited to talk yeah. about with Double A. Yeah. We announced it last, announced week, last so week, so it's no yeah. secret. If you uh, saw last week's episode, if you didn't, then you'll Already be surprised. Been seeing this right now. Cover right now. Yeah, yeah I know right. our light's kind of blocking it out, but you'll get a good look there. But uh, for our... Uh, Listeners that are joining us Facebook Live, you know we don't go anywhere. We stay right here and hang out with you. And if you ever want to join the conversation, uh, we do go live every Friday night on Facebook. Uh, feel free to come by and join in the conversation. Um, so for those of you listening on audio, we'll be right back. Guys, if you're here with us Facebook Live, again, it takes nothing but a second for us to get into the topic. So during, we'll use this time to read any last comments here. Uh, Anthony says, <laughs> Conor McGregor needs to get knocked to knock out Logan uh, Paul, that would be great. I would love to. I love to see Connor knock people out. I, I was going to say, I follow Connor Connor pretty good. Mm -hmm. Would he even get into something like this with the Logan Paul, or would he see that as, as a waste of time? Because Logan Paul's not trained to be. I, a I don't mixed martial artist. He's I not. don't think that he would see it as beneath him, and I wouldn't. I wouldn't be surprised if what Dana. You know, what, what about this? Would Dana White even let? one of them guys come in there now that's he, different because he said yeah. that he made a mistake with cm punk he he openly admitted to it yeah was like that was a mistake yeah i'm not going to do that again because cm punk was so out of his league yeah uh with with the ufc making the ufc jump you know and he was like i'm not going to do that again would he let someone like uh one of the paws come in uh you think i don't know that would be i, I do feel like dana's a, a businessman above all else yeah. wants to make money we're, I think that they're but gonna... he doesn't want to disrespect the sport either, you know, by letting another guy that what what have maybe a month of a of time maybe to train. I mean, yeah, you're going up against someone like Conor McGregor who's just been doing that for decades or anything. Right. You right. Know, he's not I don't think he would let one of these guys come into the UFC. I think they would look at what these Mayweather numbers do and see if it's worth it. But yeah. I don't know. I, I don't know, though. It's hard to say because you like know he what? said that article, he was like, you know what? I'm I made a mistake with Punk. Yeah, you know, and he he said he really didn't like that. You know, UFC is supposed to be the top of the tops of mixed martial arts, and mm. to let someone that shouldn't even be in the ring, probably to him, it's more offensive than numbers. I would say. I would hope so. You know? I would hope that that Dana White is that kind of guy, but I, to me, he strikes me more in the vein of a Vince McMahon. You think so? I, oh yeah, I think so. I mean, and and I think that because of that, it's like that's why you get stuff like. You know, Vince is always, and again, that's sports entertainment, but he's always yeah. brought in people like Ronda, people like Floyd, people see, like it Shaq. It works in the wrestling world. It, it does. Works, it does. When you're talking about real stuff, real fights, you know, people are going to criticize. You know, you know that. If, mm -hmm. if Logan Paul got really seriously hurt against Conor McGregor, they're going to say, what the hell was Dana White even thinking well, letting him into the UFC? Imagine, that. imagine he somehow managed to knock out McGregor. Now that damage is his sport. It, that's their, you know, in a sense, because really, double A, yeah. you know, you, Connor, what I love about Connor is that he is kind of like that face of UFC or whatever, but they don't yeah, really have yeah. that when he's they not don't. around and when yeah. he's not winning. He hasn't kind of been winning. And when he's not winning, it's like, well, I know that's how it is. You know what I mean? Like, like winning. It, it makes your trash talk with less value. It reminds yeah. me of like a, like a, a broner. Like you're always talking shit, but you always get you beat. Get, like get, you yeah. suck. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. so. like you can talk shit like Ali and maybe lose once every once in a while, but man, you have to get some wins under you after yeah. a while. And it can't be bums all the time either. <clears throat> no. You know what I mean? Like you got to no. be beating some like people. When, after you know? Muhammad Ali lost to Joe Frazier, but then he beat Frazier again, and then he beat Foreman. So right. it was like okay. Right. Now you're so at the people, height of your trash. Yeah, talking. people still want to see Ali get in there, you know, but yeah, with Conor McGregor getting knocked out and what getting submitted to, uh -huh. or just pure knockout. Yeah, yeah, I got submitted. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Now mm -hmm. you're kind of losing that luster now with your guy. You're like, okay, well, right. you know, this guy's over the hill. It's kind of like with Chuck Lido, right? You know, mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, like Ronda too. Like guys, Ronda's gone yeah. now. She was your main draw, you well, know, her, for the females. I, I don't know. I, I was like, man, she, I think she gave up too fast. Uh, yeah. I was like, come on, don't let that one. Yeah. Like, that really, really got fuck her. you up. You know? I mean, but then right now you look at that Nunez, the women's champion. She looks unbeatable. Oh, okay. Yeah. No, oh, no, no. Yeah, for sure. I don't know for who sure. would beat that chick. Sure. She looks really tough. Uh, let's see here. What does Anthony say? Uh, no, uh, Richard says, uh, Dana White won't allow that to happen. Uh, not, yeah. Anthony says, uh, how about Iron Mike? Mike, uh, you in the what? UFC or just back in the ring? I mean, back in we, the ring. we saw the 
the one it was he, he looked great he looked great he looked great yeah. and roy was actually hurting yeah he was holding his ribs pretty good after the fight mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. but for a real fight uh I don't know. I don't think they would sanction would be, but, but that fight really it showed that Mike was still a money maker. It was like ranked in the top ten of like buys buy rate. So I'd probably watch it for sure. Well, we were guilty. I was guilty yeah. of that. I bought it. So. I love Mike, <laughs> so you know that's interesting to me. Um, Rich says, um, listen to his last interview. He was not wanting that trouble. I guess Connor about fighting one of the paws. Is that uh, no? I think you're referring to um, um, oh oh uh, yeah. With with um, Dana White, I think you might be definitely correct, Rich. Probably you're probably right. Just too much to deal with. Like, I'm gonna say Dana won't even allow that to happen. Yeah, I, I agree with you that it would be definitely disrespecting the sport. Yeah, uh, Richard says Doug Rose is a beast in the UFC. Her last fight was badass. Okay, I need to check her out then for sure. And then Anthony says, "Oh, what about Mike Tyson fighting Jake Paul? Oh, that'd be one sided. You're talking about like a super professional in Mike Tyson that would just probably beat the shit out. of Yeah, him. I mean, it would be he would really destroy him, which would be yeah, you know, awesome. Because if watch. you saw that last fight with Mike, Mike still was moving really damn good. Yeah, he got himself in back into shape, and he was just golly, he was he was fighting, and he's not going to make the same mistake that Nate Robinson did. Trust no, me, definitely not. Yeah, no way. Yeah." Um, what else did I want? Do we want to say anything else while we're did here? You want to show we... off some of your stuff, or do you want to? Yeah, uh, we can do that as part. Well, should we do that as part? Is it or, or it's up to you? You're not going to really grasp it. Well, guys. Uh, anyways, uh, before this happens, uh, Canelo Billy Joe Saunders tomorrow. That's yeah. gonna be a really great fight. Texas yeah. Stadium. Uh, it's seventy bucks. It's seventy dollars, but I mean, shit. If you get a party going together, you know, you get some people to pitch in. It might not hurt that bad. So yeah. Get a party of vaccinated people together, you know <laughs> yeah, what I mean, yeah. and uh, and get her done. But there, you know, yeah. for if you guys have heard podcasts before, me and CM, we bleed boxing, we love boxing. You know, we've been to boxing fights uh, together. Mm -hmm. We've seen many HBO fights, many Showtime fights, many since uh, we were little guys. And yeah. when your dad would yeah. buy them all the time, so, uh, man, uh, Felix Trinidad. So me and CM um, are going to be watching uh, the fight tomorrow. Yeah, so. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. It's, it's cool. If, you know, we always have fun with that as well. Getting yeah, together, it is but fun. Then, yeah. you know, when you're you're in you're you're tuned in to the fight too, and you're kind of doing your own armchair uh, commentating, it's <laughs> always great yeah. too. Yeah. Uh, so we, guys, I would uh, encourage you to get a group together, uh, pitch in, and. Uh, Watch the fight. It should be a damn good fight tomorrow. Yeah. It's so. time, guys. It's time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's yes, but yeah. still. So. Uh, let's get right into it. Yeah, no, let's like, get into it, man. We're, we're talking gonna, we all it. things invincible. We heard it last week, guys. So uh, I wish Gabe was kind of here right now. Gabe would. I know, man. Gabe Flores. I know man, Gabe's probably you? busy. Where probably, are, brother? He's pressing them pressing books. books pressing them know? books, man. Yeah. It's worth more money than listening to us. So. <laughs> it is. It is. You got to make that cash first. All right. Let's bring it back full circle, guys. Here we go. Uh, guys, thanks for hanging out. If you are listening to us on the audio version, you, uh, anywhere that you can listen to podcasts, Spotify, iTunes, Amazon, Audible, I heart, uh, anywhere. anywhere. Uh, if you're listening to us on any one of those platforms, you probably just heard our 30-second commercial, uh, and we appreciate you still hanging out with us. And if you're joining us actually live on the Facebook version, you know that we are here live um, on Facebook, and we're inviting you to join the conversation. Come in and, and comment and tell us what you think about our subject tonight as we are calling it you can certainly see him. It's not John Cena who you can't see. We're talking, you know, we're not talking about the invisible man. We're talking we're about not talking about the peacekeeper. Mm -mm. <laughs> we're talking about the invincible man himself, uh, Mr. Mark. Mark Grayson. Mark Grayson. Um, man, double A Amazon Prime. I told yeah. you last week. I was like, I know what I want to talk about. Yes, you did. I, I was, was like, it threw me for a loop. I was like, holy shit. I thought you were gonna <laughs> fight me on it. I was like, I think he's gonna fight me. I'm gonna have to pull some teeth with double A. Be like, come on, double A. You gotta see this. I because I there's things I watch and things I read that I want to share with you on yeah. this show. So yeah. I gotta be like, hey, I gotta, I gotta say, hey, I gotta use my my green ring and enforce my will <sighs> and say, come Damn on, do and willpower. you know it goes both ways. I say, hey, if there's something of course. you yeah. know I uh no we we made this agreement way mm -hmm. back when mm -hmm. you know we would talk about what we wanted to talk about. Yeah you know, this is a partnership. You know uh I'm sure CM is like a lot of times when I bring up a subject he's like oh fuck now I gotta read this <laughs> you know no, I gotta see this you know so so when CM was like really passionate about Invincible, you know, he was like, "Man, you gotta watch it. We're gonna, you know, we're gonna do the show." 
I was like, okay, I'll fucking watch it then. You yes. Know? So yeah. And uh, tell me, tell me about your experience. You binged, right? Yeah. You, so you watched back. Uh, Could you watch when it was done? Yeah. So I had to take a two. Uh, I had to take a Tuesday off for personal reasons, and I was like, you know what? It'll be a perfect time uh, to watch it. So I set up my Roku in my room. Uh, sat on my chair and just binge watch, binge watch like all eight episodes, uh, and I was like, okay, cool, cool. I can probably get it done before my wife gets home. <laughs> now, <laughs> yeah. now, did you feel like how, well, how long were the episodes? About 45? 45, 42 to forty-five minutes long. So I was like, okay, I was about shit. right the range. Yeah, that's so the like, new standard now. Yeah, right? so I was kind of like, shit, it's gonna, you know, it's gonna be like a whole work day almost, you know, watching. <laughs> you know? Uh, but man, uh, just suck me in right away. Okay, I good. was like. Wow. Okay. Cool. And, and I haven't asked him any of this yet, so I've been wanting to hear what Double A thought. Like, like, and, was it a chore to watch, or was it an no, enjoy? No, no. Okay. At first, I was kind of like, uh, you know, I, I have to get into that mindset. But once I mm -hmm. once I started getting into it, it was great. And I gotta say, CM Robert Kirkman has to be the golden fucking goose for Image uh, with The Walking Dead and now Invincible. Tom McFarlane is probably like, please don't go to Marvel. Please don't go to DC. <laughs> you have to be here because, you know, this is produced by Image. Mm -hmm. These are made by McFarlane toys. So, I mean, you know, Todd's probably like, Robert, you got to, you know, keep pumping out all this shit for us. Yeah. You know, you've had two successful properties, The Walking Dead and now Invincible. Everyone is just blowing up on Invincible right now. And talk about successful, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, I they, they, everyone they is just turned waiting. into shows. Yeah. Um, the Walking Dead made stars, and I mean, it's in it's and going into its got, 11th season. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk about this too later, but he's even got some like Walking Dead characters voicing all of these characters, which was cool. Very cool, Very man. Cool. One of the one of the most stacked voice casts yeah, I've seen in yeah. a while. As I was going through in my research for to get ready, I was like. Wow, this guy! Wow, this guy! Wow, this, like that's gonna be fun to talk about. Um, but uh, yeah, I think in our next break, I'll show some of the. We have some visual items here, guys. I wanted to, to yeah, show man, off. You, if you you're listening really on the audio. Toys, you, you can, can see, see the book pretty good. You yeah, know, Invincible with Omni Man mm -hmm. and Mark right here. And Mark right there, so. guys. I, what I basically bought, guys, was the two uh, one and two hardcovers that are available, very affordable for a hardcover, about thirty bucks. That's not bad. Now, or the hardcover. One I bought bad. from Amazon, at thirty bucks was the number one hardcover. Now, the second one, for some reason, was going for like fifty. But I went ahead and went to skybound which is you know that i believe that is kirkman's uh yeah imprint yeah. everything is like yeah. from skybound uh there yeah i got uh that one for the same price as the amazon uh one the number two book hardcover i got it there at skybound and then uh which i actually told double a i had a little bit of an issue because i ordered two shirts also i was good not that i don't support and love to now watch this podcast uh which i am wearing right now with lucky and joe <laughs> but i would have been wearing an invincible shirt but they did not come in uh my book came in but not that so i had to write them and say hey this was all part of one order where are my shirts and, yeah yeah they, they gave me a tracking number and all that where it's going to be good but i don't have them for tonight that, which that, they didn't yeah. know that so yeah. i'll tweet robert kirkman that personally and, and see what i get out of him probably nothing nice. um he was just on um Fat Man Beyond, they brought him on to talk about oh, the nice. final episode. Okay, uh, he had some cool stuff to say. Kevin Smith gives him a hard time. As I was calling him the billionaire Robert Kirkman. But pretty much like you said, the, the golden goose. Uh, yeah, I mean, this guy probably has made Image like the number three company. Probably soon number two if, if the rumors are true about DC closing a shop. Yeah. Uh, Comic-wise. Yeah. Uh, if that's true, Image could probably, you know, get behind Invincible and whatever Walking Dead properties he has i mean they're re-releasing the old run just now in color yeah i mean i'm yeah. like i have to admit i'm very curious because i'm like <laughs> damn you know i don't really get that into black and white books maybe save for sin city, sin city yeah. you know um and i i remember when all the remember when they re-released those big essentials yes i was like oh i'm gonna get those because they're affordable the, and i can get those classic, but they're black and they're white black and, and i don't white. like that it, it, you know the colors yeah if it, it really was in pops. color it really yeah. pops yeah so to me, with the Walking Dead issues I have read that were black and white were fine. I haven't read that many of them, but I'm like, oh, in color, it must be vastly better. You know what I mean? Like, which is so funny, right? Like for something that was originally presented in black and white, like they had to colorize it. You know, uh, I wonder what that number one goes for now. Is if it's it's, up it's over a hundred? The color for sure. number one. Oh, the think? color. Uh, yeah. I don't know about the color. I wonder if it's able to be easy. They call them deluxe or whatever. Walking yeah, Dead books, but, yeah. but to re-release your whole run just in color, like it's like it must be fucking popular. You like know? I say, he's the golden goose right now. You know, everything Kirkman touches an image. I'm sure Todd is like, let's push it out. Let's yeah. push it out. And here's what you people know. might not know is that this is what he wrote first. 
Yes, he yes, wrote this first. yes, it was. Yes, I couldn't believe how old it was when I looked at it. I was like, damn, older than from, the boys. Yeah, yeah, it's from like 02. Okay, okay, right? The boys didn't come out until like what? Oh, I I'd can't have remember. To, I'd have to check, out, but... I'd have to check, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that's interesting, you know. What I mean, but, like, I mean you know? uh, it's funny though, it's kind of like it's it's a good story, but it's kind of also like a parody almost too of like DC heroes, too. I mean. <laughs> they're they, you know the guardians of the globe it's it's all justice league i mean mm -hmm. he really doesn't even shy away from the names yeah like, it's really close like <laughs> war woman martian man you know uh red rush you uh, know red he's wearing red, red too, yeah you know, he's wearing immortal red. Yeah. And, um the yeah. girl, the green ghost, the green ghost. Green ghost. Yeah, I was like, okay, come yeah. on, you're not even really trying. It's like, come on, right? Yeah, right. and then Omni Man, that's just like another name for like a Superman, yeah, you know? so yeah, like everything I can do. Everything. <laughs> yeah. uh, although, I did want to talk to you a little bit about this. Like, when we get in later on to the powers, um, there are some things that he does not do, it's, it's mainly speed and strength, you know what I mean? So, that's a very um, will kind of come into play uh, later on when we talk about it, but um. Yeah, guys, so it's one season thus far on Amazon so Prime far, Video. That's where you can stream it. Eight episodes, like Double A said, about 45 minutes. I watched it week to week because I had been hearing. And it just ended last week, right? Like last week yeah. was the last episode, right? Yes, last okay. week was the last episode. So it was still pretty fresh. Week. Yeah, so it was like uh, it only went longer than Falcon and Winter Soldier because it had more episodes. Uh, and I think it might have started one week before. So, But I had been hearing good things, and I was like, you know, I'm curious to check it out. I dig animation, so I'll I'll watch it's, this. It's very animation-looking, right? Yeah. Like, like almost Japanese animation almost. Uh, yeah, it reminds me of like uh, like some of the cartoons maybe we've been watching in the 90s. Yeah. And I, mean, I, was, yeah. I like that kind of yeah. drawing. So, uh, But very clean. Like it's not, you know, hard to get into. It's so funny, Double A, that you're mentioning about Kirkman being the golden goose and image uh, because I didn't even think about this, but – this property and maybe The Walking Dead might not get away in DC or Marvel because there's uh, no, some very. No, 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 no. Let me tell you guys, this comic, this this cartoon no. we're talking about is not for kids, not well, for the faint of heart. Well, not at just. Oh well, yeah, because even the boys, they got rid of the boys, and that was in Wildstorm. Mm -hmm. Remember, mm -hmm. that was a DC product, but even then, it was like too much for DC. Yeah, and uh, Dynamite ended up getting the properties for the boys, right. which I'm sure DC is. Kicking, kicking their ass themselves. right now, mm -hmm. you know, with how successful the boys has been. But no. yeah, even Vertigo, it was like even too much, I guess, for the Vert. Well, yeah. they canceled the Vertigo line for. I was going to say it reason. would have had to have been in Vertigo for DC. But they they got rid of that line, which is probably their most popular line outside of like Superman, Batman. And do you remember that Marvel briefly had that Marv imprint, that M A R V? Mac oh, that one, no. Uh, no, no, because that's what Kick Ass was under. Because Kick Ass Kick was Ass. Marvel, really. Yeah. I didn't know Kick that. Ass is Marvel. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, and they had done that imprint kind of just for that, so they could, I wow. guess, have the more adult themed comics. Because I thought that was Max. I thought that was just or Marvel Knights. I thought that was Marvel Knights and then Max. No, because Knights was, was there. still not what Max. Now Max, the Max imprint was like there was blood, there was like cussing, vertigo, there was right? sex. Yeah, that was like the Vertigo. But then they had done. Kick ass came under, like I said, under Marv, M A R V, or whatever. Oh, I, that was supposed to get. Sure, I didn't know new... that was a Marvel product. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, that was supposed to be their new, like, darker uh, titles or whatever. But either way, The Walking Dead, certainly, we all know that. But this would definitely have to be under one of those as well because there's oh, definitely. Yeah. But, and, we're, and again, guys, we're not talking about the comics. I have them here because I want to read them now based on the series. We're talking just about the Amazon Prime series. You know, uh, I'm not going to go into like the last episode, but when I was watching the last episode, it really reminded me of Miracle Man 15. Mm. And that's how like far I was like, holy shit, this is really going pretty like far. So I was yeah. like, wow. Yeah. And yeah. the immediate comparisons I heard were to the boys, which I was kind of wondering, I was like, is this a little bit older? There are some aspects, guys, but to you, me, you know what? I can't really see that. I see more Miracle yeah. Man comparisons. That see, and that's that's interesting to me. Yeah. That makes me want to read some more of that yeah. Miracle Man stuff. But you know, I also go is always go back to Double A is uh, the Watchmen because the Watchmen the was Watchmen. the first. That's time, a good one too. Yeah, the Watchmen was kind of the first time where you know Alan Moore um, the breaking down right of right like the characters really of like showing like heroes aren't really heroes, right? Mm -hmm. They're kind of like despicable kind of. Well, or like it says, who watches the Watchmen? Yeah. Like, what makes these people? But even like the characters know? themselves, you know, like they're like, man, some of these guys are like kind of like assholes. You know, right. like comedian was supposed to be this guy, you know, and you know he's he's a jerk. He's a yeah, oh yeah, almost like would be rapist. And, yeah, you know, and then you have like the leader. He's having a, a gay affair with mm -hmm. you know another teammate. You know, right. and, 
you know, it's kind of like, wow, you know, you don't expect that with like Superman, Batman, Green yeah. Lantern, you know. And how about how that, I, I know you're caught up now on the uh, the HBO series. Yeah, watching. Yeah, yeah. How about how that gets explored even further? Right? Yeah. The themes of racism yes, and the yes. themes of, it's like, Which wow. Which is something like, that you really never heard about. So Alan Moore kind of like, that's where I, I see a lot of the, the shit coming from. Mm-hmm. You know, it's kind of from the Alan Moore stuff, you know. Even for yeah. the boys too, really honestly, I see yeah. Alan Moore watched me in Miracle Man. You know? And again, too, when it came to uh the boys, um, you know, there weren't very many of them that were uh they were kind of all despicable, you know what I mean? There really <laughs> yeah. wasn't yeah, for the most part, from what I gather in the series of, of this that we watched, season one of Invincible, I gathered that for the most part, the heroes do tend to come from a good place. They were um, they, they, they Adam they, Eve does their hearts in the right place. Invincible does. Mm-hmm. Uh, Maybe even the Guardians. I don't know about you Rick's know what blood. the Guardians. <laughs> the Guardians seem fine. The the original Guardians they seem okay. Yeah, they seemed okay. Uh, the team team. The team team. Uh, <laughs> so a little yeah. bit more growing. Well, you know what's so funny, like, right? Even robot like had like an agenda. Yeah, you know? and he went about it in a really particular way. <laughs> uh, so maybe there's because I was paying, I was like really paying attention to that storyline. I was like, mm-hmm. where is it going? Like, why did he, why did he poke him for it with the, with yeah. the blood? I was like, where is, it, where the fuck is this going? That's weird. You well, know? Even and, how when they approach him towards the end, they're like, okay, so you did this, stole his DNA without asking him all this, so you could be like, you know, uh. <laughs> get this body back for yourself and then I mean, he's kind of like well yeah like and, and we'll go into deeper because like it's like robot has like some weird fucking history that uh i kind of want to know more about like how he, he got in that spot you yeah know? almost like a fucking krang type yeah, guy i was like, like he was barely living <laughs> you know uh but you know like monster girl you know mm-hmm. that was like a weird power she could turn into this big monster but she every time she does it causes her to like uh, get younger, right? Like by a week or a day or something like that. So I was like, "Wow, holy shit!" And now here's something too, right? When um when Mark is talking with Adam Eve and he's saying, you know, she's like, "Well, yeah, we're the number four team or whatever." <laughs> yeah. Yet when they rebuild the Guardians of the Globe, they use the majority of that team team. I'm like, what happened to Fight Force? We never see them. But but you know what? It seems like uh like Fight Force was kind of like like they were like a badass team, but mm-hmm. they got it into like they do shit. Like very sloppy. That's kind oh, of what I picked up. Okay, and I was like, "Fight Force." I wonder if they're trying to do X Force. Maybe that's interesting. You know, because yeah. you know, X Force of all the X teams are always seen as a more militant group. I was gonna say maybe more gun yes, using. That's or, what I was you know. saying. <laughs> so maybe, maybe that's why. But uh, yeah, team team. Uh, it could. I mean, it could be that robot became the leader, and that's why he picked. Yeah, you know the 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 people that he picked. You Cecil know? taps him to be yeah. uh, to be the uh, kind of the the spearhead the the reconstruction of the Guardians of the Globe, and we'll talk a little bit about that too. Without guys, we've said kind of a lot already. You might be like, "What the fuck are these two talking about?" It, yeah, it's it's that's what I'm saying. You kind of have to go in there. You, you got it. We want you to go watch it, right? But we're gonna tell you right now, this far in, you're this far in. Uh, spoilers ahead guys oh, yeah. we're gonna talk oh, yeah. about the show we're gonna talk about the ending we're gonna talk about there's a major plot twist in there there's a thing it's like if we told you right now the end of the sixth sense so if you don't want to know that listen to this episode later come back and join us another time or go read it go watch it and then and then you can pick this up because this will be on youtube available afterwards again we do want to invite you to join the conversation if you're here and if you're around and if you don't mind spoilers and you want to hear us talking about this or maybe, yeah, maybe it'll it might make, make you interested yeah maybe it'll encourage you to go watch it you might not remember everything we said Sometimes, sometimes I read spoilers just so I can, and I it makes me want to go watch it. You know? Yeah, I'm a person that I don't like to know everything going in, but if I can know, you know, I need a little bit to kind of like be like, oh, okay, you know, yeah. like me, I didn't go on the internet and read like what happens next. You Honestly, know, I myself, knew but... nothing whatsoever. Of me neither. Invincible. I me neither. Never heard of the character Invincible. I nothing. I was like, oh wow, okay. I thought this was a new product. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I thought Kirkman had just wrote this like in 2019 or 2020. I, do, do you think that made it better for you? I, I think so. I think it did make it better so. for me. I was like, oh, yeah. I'm really enjoying yeah. this. Like, yeah. I I know nothing. I know nothing of these nothing. characters. And it was nothing. like, it made it very enjoyable. Yeah. And it made me have other hard opinions as well that I want to talk about you. Okay. I, I was actually been in my mind since I got done, since I told you I wanted to do this. I was like, I cannot wait to hear what Joe Valet thinks about certain characters because you have very <laughs> strong feelings on certain people yeah. that sometimes we don't just we don't agree <laughs> yeah. on. You, yeah. know, you guys don't ever want to hear our Darth Vader discussion. Uh, mm. But uh, very different opinions. Oh, so, <laughs> so, 
eight episodes, guys, about 45 to 48 yeah. minutes. Yeah. Double A's. It's a perfect. That's I think I think studios know that's a new sweet spot. It, it is. It Amazon really is. Prime. Um, go watch it. It's a lot of fun. We're going to talk about it again. Spoilers are coming. So um, if you don't want to hear them. Now's your time to click off. Come back and join us maybe in the break or, or later on. You know, we'll get get to the next one. But yeah, we're gonna spoil the shit out of this show. Um, let me start with some of the primary characters yeah, yeah, and some yeah, of the yeah. cast. Yeah. So we start off with the main character guy is a kid. It's seventeen. He's in high school. His name is Mark Grayson. He is voiced by Stephen Yun, Yun or Yun Yun, who is now an Oscar winner, guys, for uh, well, uh, Oscar nominee. Excuse me, Oscar nominee for yeah. uh, Minari, uh, which I have not seen. Have you seen? No, no, no. Okay. I'm probably not. But we know him as Glenn from the Walk Walking Motherfucking Dead, who uh, was our boy yeah. for all those seasons. Yeah, season I mean, one, two. everyone knows who Glenn is. That was like that peak period for Walking Dead when everybody was watching it. So, and many people turned it off when he when went he the died. hard way. Yeah, by our boy yeah. Negan. Yeah, and it was fucking brutal man it was brutal it was but like, yeah what it what a, how you know how beloved he was that a lot what? of people turned oh when we, when uh, i thought he died in that other one with when, when he slid under yeah, the garbage yeah. thing uh, man the, people like, were pissed. i was like yeah. no no not yeah. when and when he survived i was like yes yeah. i felt like when john snow came back to life yeah. i was like fucking glenn is alive people like, were was pissed like, off when he thought he was dead at that point yeah and, yeah and you know that to me was a surprise in in that episode as well with uh in the season seven with negan because i didn't know the comic book i didn't know that you know he was the one so when i saw that i mean it fucking hurt but at the same time i was like i need i'm so that made me dig my heels in more to the walking dead people that walked away i'm like you walked away right now yeah people like, are pissed when he died but so yeah the power of steven young <laughs> Love Glenn, the power of Stephen. Like, he does a great job of uh, voice acting. He yeah, does a really good job. Fantastic of voice acting. job. I couldn't tell it was him. Me neither. You know what I mean? Me I mean, number one, I you know, he's obviously Asian American, but he did, there's nothing. This, no, but I couldn't even the, hear Glenn. I yeah, couldn't I couldn't really hear, hear Glenn hear at all whatsoever. Mm -mm, like yeah. the clearest. I mean, just you know, not that there would be because it's Asian. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying like it. He sounds like a different guy. Like like Double A said, there's no. Yeah, it's not like I'm hearing playing, Glenn. He's playing a 17 year old. He's voice acting a 17 year old mm -hmm. kid. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we have uh, Sandra O oh, who plays uh, his mom, and then we have J.K. Simmons who plays Omni Man. Yeah, and Sandra O. Oh, a lot of I know ladies might know her from Grey's Anatomy. Uh, I knew that she was in that Killing Eve show, uh, but I'd never seen that. But I knew that because I think the ads would come on during yeah, wrestling or whatever. Lot, yeah. Uh, so I would see those ads. Um, I think she's. I wrote down she's also in. Um, uh, I don't know what else I have. I have kill. I have. I really only know Killing Eve yeah. and Grey's Anatomy. Yeah, that's the only ones I know. And uh, <laughs> J.K. Simmons, we all know him as mainly J. Jonah Jameson from the original Tony Wire. Have you seen the commercials? What State Farm? State Farm, yeah. <laughs> uh, Sideways, he gets a lot. I think he got nominated yeah, for Sideways. You know, he actually won his Oscar for that. Oh, one. that he yes. did win it for that yes. one. Yeah, great. Yeah. Um, I love him in Juno too. In Juno, he plays yeah, the dad. Funny he's, in he's hilarious. Yeah. He's just great. He can do. I yeah. think he can do yeah, anything. Yeah. Um, he was also Commissioner Gordon, so yeah. he walks be as Kevin Smith says, walks between both worlds. Yeah, and I know he was in that show Oz. I never saw it, but I know he was in that That's prison right. drama. Oz. That's right. And <clears> I think <throat> he was a neo Nazi in that one. I yes, think. he, he was. was. Yes, that. So a great range. J.K. Simmons is a fantastic actor. Uh, and uh, I mean, it kind of look like when you see Omni Man. That's why I was like, is this a joke or something? Because it looks like. Uh, Jay Jonah, like for real, it looks yeah. like Jay Jonah. I well, was and, like, but I'm not even that is, a joke. It's Jack. No, I know, but it's just it was funny because I was like, like I didn't. That's why I didn't take this seriously because yeah. I was like, okay, they got J.K. Simmons to voice Omni Man, but <laughs> he looks like fucking Jay Jonah. I was like, did uh, you? Uh, so I didn't know who. You know, I was like, okay, this this is a fucking joke or something. <laughs> did you see the uh, the pictures of J.K. Simmons? Uh, no, I got it. Uh, when he was working out for uh um yes no i've seen he was pictures fucking yes big, he's, he's right big, he got yeah. super big i was like holy shit this older no, guy he, he is uh he's he's very buff uh, uh him and uh the guy who plays uh uh the main uh bad guy in avatar they're both very jacked right up dudes. right yeah Stephen lane Stephen uh, lane yeah they're both very jacked up fucking older dudes like mm -hmm. you're like holy shit but he does a great job. You know, J.K. Simmons has a very gruff, iconic voice. So, Omni Man, uh, you know, that's uh, Mark's dad, and he is an alien, which Mark knows. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Nolan Grayson. Yeah, Nolan. Yeah. I wonder if he has like a, a Viltrumite name. I wonder. Uh, he, he probably it's does. Interesting if you he know, does. I'm and, sure. 
you know, supposedly, you know, like Mark's like getting pissed off because like his powers haven't come in. He's not even too sure if he's even going to get powers, you know, and Nolan, Nolan says it usually happens around puberty, but I mean, Mark's already like thinking 17, yeah, but he could be 15. He says 17. Okay, 17. Yeah, he says so, it, yeah. Uh, so, you know, Mark's like, fuck, you know, like, what's, what's kind of going on? He's a teen that wants to be like his dad, you know, he's mm-hmm. a teenager and he's like, why, why can't I have these powers yet? You know, <laughs> especially since his dad is like the most powerful man on the planet. Um, and they live a very suburban life. Yes. Yeah, his uh, mom no is one, a real estate agent. No one knows who Omni Man is. Like, no one. In fact, they don't really touch on it. And maybe they'll touch on it more in the comics, but they touch it. He's a writer. Yes, he is. He's uh he writes he's travel an books. author. He writes uh or sci-fi books. Oh, is it sci-fi? I books? think it's sci-fi books. Okay. Yes. I, I thought that the Cecil said at the end, like, oh, his travel books always maybe, sold well, maybe, but yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, you know, he he tells his origin. You know, he's from this you know very advanced planet. They're Viltrum. Uh, Viltrum. Mm-hmm. You know, and they they go out to other planets and kind of try to bring peace and and advance the technology. Yeah. You know, and and his uh duty was Earth. Mm-hmm. You know, and then that's where he fell in love with uh, what, what's her name? Oh, her name is Debbie. Debbie. Debbie Grace. And yeah. they have a family, and you know, and so she knows all about him. You know, and everyone knows about him. And uh, Omni Man is just he's he's this version of Superman. He is, I would have to say, out of all the Image characters that I know, he has to be the strongest character in Image. So. Uh, we, I mean, I got introduced to a whole nother Superman here, you know, so extremely like, wow. strong, yeah. extremely fast, durable, fast. Th- that's the one that always sleeps that people don't think about that part. It's very, very, very durable. The motherfucker can take a licking and keep you on can. ticking. Yes, no doubt. They even address the blood at one point where they say Viltramite cells don't break yeah. down. So yeah. it's like you can get hurt and you can get beat up. But you don't die. Yeah. So it's like that's a very, uh, I think that's a very Superman ish cool. yeah, quality because cool. that is kind yeah. of the same thing about Superman. And he's say. just like naturally strong. It's it's not like when he came to Earth and he became stronger. You know, mm-hmm. he's just that race is it's like just a, like a whole army of Superman. You right. know, it's nuts. Yeah, yeah. Um. So we see that Mark is in high school. He's waiting on the powers. He's working at a burger yeah. restaurant or whatever. The powers start to show up. Dad says, "Oh, great, great! Like, let's start to train." Yeah, but he doesn't look like he's like really that thrilled, right? Um, like when they're eating dinner, he kind of doesn't look thrilled that he's got his powers. You know, it's kind of like I was surprised about that. I was like, "Oh wow!" I don't know. I don't know if I picked that up. I might not have picked that. That he I might not have got hesitant that. Hesitant okay. when he told him. Okay, you know, like I, like let's let's start training. Mm-hmm. He was kind of hesitant a little bit. Maybe so. maybe he was uh, wondering about like the level that it was at because. You know, he's half. He's half. he's a yeah. he's half human. And they draw the mom Debbie uh voiced by Sandra O. Ed looking Asian American. So Mark yeah, looks she is. Half, yeah, she is. you know, like a half Anglo, half Asian American. I guess what Glenn would look like. Yeah, I <laughs> guess what Glenn would look like, yeah, for sure. So um I mean I would imagine if Steven Yoon was a little bit younger, they, they it could have been a live action show. Could have been. And yeah. here's what I heard, because Kirkman was on um <clears throat> Fat Memion, but he did say that uh Seth Rogen and uh, that Evan Goldberg, oh, they're, yeah, they're, right. they're, they're the executive producers, producers yes, and he's one of yes. the voices. Seth yes, Rogen. he's uh, Alan the Alien. Alan the Alien, yeah. yeah. Um, there is going to be a live action version that's separate from this, oh, wow. so they're already that's already going to be going uh, on. So there may be a, okay. may be a movie. I don't All know. Right. I don't know. Uh, th- that's what I had heard already okay. that that's going to be, but they're treating it separate. And he says the reason why they were involved in this is because. They're already doing that, so that's okay. that. The reason why I think that's kind of cool is because I feel like that gives us hope for Preacher, which like maybe we didn't get the best treatment in the show, but could maybe get a good treatment in the movies. <clears throat> yeah, I don't know. That's what I was thinking about. I was like, oh, they're doing them side by side, but you know what? Double A. Look how many fucking Batman we have running around right now. It's like if the property's hot, you might as well get everything. Yeah, it's like three Batmans right now. Yeah, so I mean, I guess they're just being smart and saying, hey, we're gonna head that off at the pass. Yeah. Um, if you're watching the first episode, this is how I felt. I was kind of like, okay, this feels very like any other superhero thing I had seen. Yeah, it wasn't blowing me away at first. I know. Yeah, that's how I felt yeah. too. And and I told my dad to watch it. I was like, Dad, watch it. And, and uh, he's he's about he's about halfway through, I think now, maybe a little bit more. Um, but uh, it's the end that is a major fucking shocker of episode one. Well, not just the end though. I mean, it really starts pumping up like around the middle, like mm-hmm. around four or five. It really starts pumping up. 
uh, where you're starting to learn more and more and more right. about what's really going on right. around here, you know? And it's interesting too, because <clears throat> what's happening in double A is that like, um, it goes kind of fast, right? It's not yeah. like your traditional yeah. origin story. It's like, he kind of gets the powers and yeah. he wants to, he wants to go out and try it out, go out and fly. He tries to make his own costume. Because that, the dude's pretty much invulnerable. He's yeah. invincible. Yeah. You know, he's super strong. He can take a beating. Mm -hmm. You know, he can breathe out in space. He can do all these amazing things. So what, how are you going to feel as a 17 year old that can do all these things? You know, you're going to feel like shit. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> now, how did you feel? I wrote this note because I just wrote some notes that I wanted to discuss. You kind of like talking points. We're getting kind of close guys to our first break, our second break. I'm sorry. Um, it's, we're right up on it. Uh, but I'm going to ask you this question doubly before we go there. Um, I felt like on day two of having powers that like he was already being kind of bitchy. Yeah. Like I was like, already like, I was like, like there is these Mark has these moments, uh, you know, who is invincible where I'm kind of like, Hey, like you really like are crying a lot already. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and you know what they show, they show in the first episode early on that he is a fan of comic books. He is a fan of superheroes. And, you know, I think they even, it's not a situation where he doesn't like, like his dad's not his favorite. His dad is his favorite. His yeah. dad's his favorite superhero. Yeah. Even his buddy tells me, he's like, Oh, you're always a big Omni man guy, yeah. whatever. And I was yeah. like, well, yeah, why not? I've seen other properties where they do something similar like this, and it's like, oh, that's not my favorite. Like, they're not, I don't want to, they want to be the opposite of that. Yeah. So, this is cool to me that he's like, he does really look up to his dad. And yeah, his, I mean, his dad's a badass. Yeah. yeah. So, and some of the comics he's reading are kind of weird, too. Like, one of them is about like a detective dog or something that's like right. that. I was like, what the hell? Yeah. So I was like, what is this? Whatever. So, he, he does a lot of things that I don't think a comic book fan would do. Like, I'm like, why are you like, you're bitching about these things. You know, you're saying these things, you know, he makes kind of like what I would consider rookie mistakes. Like anyone that's a comic I, book. You know what? I kind of thought maybe Kirkman was going for that old school Spider-Man. Yeah. Peter. Okay. Okay. I thought that's where he's going at because like in issue two or three, when he fights octopus, he loses. Oh, okay. He loses a battle. So I was thinking, I was like, maybe Kirkman was going for, the old Stan Lee, Steve Ditko run of Spider Man. Yeah, I that's the way I felt. I yeah. felt like Mark was like like Spider Man a lot. That '60s Spider Man. Yeah, a lot. That that makes a lot of sense. That makes a lot of sense when you put it that way. Yeah. Let, let me tell you how it went for me, guys. So I watched it week to week, and I was like loving it. And and when you're watching it week to week, there's a lot of these cliffhangers. So I found myself not being able to like. I was like, oh, I can't wait for the next episode. Like I'm like thinking about it. like I went. I know on Friday I'm going to watch Falcon and Winter Soldier. Then I'm going to watch Invincible right yeah. afterwards. That's yeah. what I was doing. To, in the last couple of days before getting ready for tonight, I rewatched the series. It's a lot of cool stuff when you rewatch it, okay. knowing what you know at the end. A lot of things that Nolan says, a lot of things that Nolan does, you're like, oh, okay. Because he fucking, early on when they're training, he whacks the shit out of Mark. Yeah, he does. And yeah. like, he's like, oh, let me show you, like, hit like this. And he hits him fucking so hard that yeah. he's like, you know, he yeah, takes so he's it. Like, I can't believe you hit me that hard. Yeah, but he's <laughs> like, he's fucked up. Yeah. Uh, but guys, we're right at our second break. Um, if you're listening to us on audio, you're going to hear just a quick, as I call it, the blip. blip. <laughs> and then we'll be right back continuing talking all things Invincible. If you're joining us Facebook Live, now's the time where we're going to take a moment, read your comments, hear what you're thinking. Uh, did you watch Invincible? If so, what did you think? And if not, will you watch it? If that, we'll be right back. Uh, guys, we are here with you. We have not gone anywhere on Facebook Live. We see some comments have came in. Uh, we've got maybe some uh, maybe some more people have joined, we hope. Uh, but let's scroll on up and see what we got here in the comment section. Double A. Let me put my... Uh, yeah, my so Rich on. says, uh, where are they showing that show? Uh, they're showing it on Amazon Prime right now. It's kicking ass for Amazon, Richard. Uh, check it out, man. You, you like comic shit? You, you'll you'll dig Invincible. You will definitely dig it, Rich. It's it's hardcore, man. It's not for kids. I don't know if you got little ones around, or whatever. It's an adult type show. Yeah, it's animated, yeah. but there's there's blood. You'll like there's... it. It's good. It the writing's good. I mean, it's not it's not like a kid show. So. Yeah, there's blood. There's cursing. There's not there's blood. there's sexual situations, but not really like eh, sex. Not, so. not that yeah, like I would that. say it doesn't go like where the boys goes on that no, note. No. Uh, Anthony says, "Shout out to all the hardworking moms. Happy Mother's Day! Yes, yeah, it's great, it's great Mother's call. Day, and Happy Sunday. Mother's Day weekend to all the yeah. moms, moms yeah. out there. My mom, double A, your mom, yeah, and your wife, wife, and yeah. my, and my my, uh, my lady, and my yeah. sister." Uh, Jason says, "Y'all get a lot of hell damage over there. Uh, we did have hell. I did, mm -hmm. but luckily, uh, no damage. So. Yes, I had hell also, and luckily, also no damage. Um, you know, we never know what the roof is like until you know. Thank God, but we're 
I'm gonna pray nothing's going on with that. Hey, Gabe. Finally, there we go. Yay. Gabe in the house. What's up, my man? Sorry, I know that it was a little while ago you commented, but I hope you're still here with us. Uh, Anthony says, uh, "Isn't the Rock playing a superhero?" Yes, he uh, is. In my head, did I skip? Villain. Oh, vi okay, right, right. Villain, um, maybe. Black Adam is the name of the uh, character yeah. that the Rock will be playing. Who's main? Uh, yeah, he's the villain because he's the main bad yeah. guy of Shazam. Yeah, because you know? apparently he's going against the Justice Society of America. Oh, so okay. Doctor Fate. The Hulk nice. man, yeah, you know, all those it'll uh, be cool to see a perspective of that yes, where that he, the yes, bad so guy's perspective yes, so against well. the heroes. So, uh, very cool, yeah. uh, yeah. So, he is, uh, um, who asked that question? Anthony, Anthony. So, yeah, uh, keep that on your radar. Uh, and Crystal says, uh, hi, hi guys, Crystal. hi, Crystal. Uh, welcome uh, to the show. Happy We're Teachers back. Week. I think it's Teachers yes, Week. So happy happy Educators, week. Uh, Educators Week. Yeah, I, we might have missed it. It was National maybe. Nurses, Nurses Day. So, we met. Uh, happy Nurses Day, and yeah. uh, Diane, Jen, yeah. um, and my wife, and of course, your wife, my yes. wife, yeah, yes, all the nurses she in, kicks in our ass, lives. man. Mm -hmm. She sure does, yeah. Uh, guys, just a quick reminder a lot of you have already bought $20 shirts. We appreciate you. Please send me pictures. I need pictures of you guys, yeah, in those shirts. Calendar. I will pay awesome. your I will pay your shipping. You send me the picture, that's gonna be awesome. Um, and guys, don't forget tonight we're talking about uh, Invincible on Amazon Prime Video, oh, nice. that's where you can go watch the show at. Uh, we're calling our episode tonight The Invincible Man. Uh, let me show you guys a couple of things Invincible related while Double A gets to some more comments here. Uh, yeah, Gabe says, uh, still here. Uh, the right show on. has surprised me a lot, and I want to hear y'all's take on it. Okay, great, so, brother. Yeah, Gabe, uh, we're going to go head first into this uh, next uh, this 30 minutes. How much I fell in love that I picked up this guy right here. Uh, I went through Skybound, which is, uh, again, I believe that's I, it's made by McFarland. It, it could be Kirkman. They all have their own, you know, brand, uh, you know, inside image, mm -hmm. you know. So, and then we've got the one of the primary female characters. I haven't Atom talked too much about her Eve. yet. Atom yeah. Eve, uh, which I think was a play on Star Sapphire. Yeah, I think that's for me. I thought that's for that. Okay, from. and this image is new to me. I've not seen that, so I don't know. We have not, neither one of us has read the comics. No. So we're only talking strictly about the show tonight, the show. but uh, yeah. I mean, this one's my favorite. I oh, like yeah, it's very, very Ooh, cool looking. And we'll talk about that one. Definitely. Uh, real soon. That's, a, that's an interesting image there of, of, the, of the guy himself. And like I said, I picked up book one, uh, which is pretty cool here. Nice, big, thick volume. Uh, from this one I got from Amazon. Oh, I know you should man. go to local comic book shops, uh, but I'm often looking for hardcovers and I can often not find them. It, you're not going to find it. You're going to have to go to Amazon. Yeah. So that's why I went, I do support local comic book shops. And in fact, I was in two of them this past week looking for some Fortnite comic books, uh, which I had some great help on uh, from uh, uh, Chris Rizzo uh, and another group helped out a lot. He's one of the Friday night faithful. Uh, he helped me get with Rob, who who got me hooked up with a, a Fortnite issue too that was sold out everywhere, um, and and I needed that. And I even reached out to some of the our tried and true places and friends that that um, Lorne would necessarily get them on there. So, and then I got this one. I ordered through Skybound because this one was a little bit more on Amazon Prime for some reason, and I wanted to get it for the better price. So I found it on the Skybound at the better price there, and I went ahead and. and uh, and pick that one up there. And I believe book three is also available on Amazon for right around the, right around the thirty dollars price range. So, uh, Gabe has something cool. He says he picked up a nine point eight first print a while back, and he's glad he did. That's man, that's great. Yeah, you know, what about me, Gabe? I want one. That's the thing, Mario. You know, that's the thing Mario always told me when I would ask him. You know, it's like how how do you keep up with those? And he was like, you almost have to hear it like when rumors start mm -hmm. coming out, like almost like the year before. That's when you really have to hit it hard with all these comics because once the show comes out, the movie comes out, that's when everyone's going to be like, oh, I need this one. I need this one. Yeah. So you almost have to be prepared a year in advance for all this kind of stuff. So yeah, for sure. Up, that's awesome. And it was 100% off our radar. Like I said, we never had even heard of the character, which it was kind of nice to watch with fresh it, eyes. It's funny because it's like Image just really doesn't like like do it for me, you know? Uh and I like Image, uh, but it's, you know, Spawn was the only character I really cared about it in Image. You know, I, I probably saw a whole bunch of these when I was collecting it. I just probably was like, this looks stupid, you know? <laughs> so... <laughs> I'm yeah. sorry, that's just the way I am a lot of times. I'm like, hey, we slept on Preacher for the longest uh, time, and we well, probably could have had... Walking Dead. You know, we slept the on The Walking Dead, dead man. That you first know? cover sucks. That first cover <laughs> is not dope. I'm like... It, that it's was like me and you said. It's like the art kind of like has to kind of like kick it for you. That's that, you know. Man. And that art really did. I was like, 
you know. And I've read through that that book one of The Walking Dead, and I don't know that I would have kept reading based on that. Like, I, I the yeah, characters yeah. must get richer as it goes along. Uh, yeah, because like obviously, I said, I'm not a big fan of Kirkman's writing. Just like I'm not a big fan of like George Lucas's writing. I'm not a fan of those. So I'm curious to see how this goes I when know, I start it up. I know. Uh, my That's girlfriend got mad at me because she's like, "More books." She's like, "You have <laughs> I see you buy books all the time and you don't read them." And I'm like, "I read one like in the past, you know, month, you know." I want to read all the time. I just I'm that guy from the Twilight Zone. <laughs> Look, we're we're comic book collectors. I'm sorry, that's just the way it is. Uh, yeah. We're gonna keep buying. <laughs> yeah, if I yeah. if I could not work and sit around and read all day while you all worked, I would do that. Yeah. But that's not the, they're not paying us to read comic books Look, yet. Th we're trying to get there. This show kind of like we kind of like reinvigorated our own love just by us talking about this about yeah. comics. So somebody uh, pay us to read comic books. Yeah. We'll read them for you. <laughs> But uh, again, this is a, a, probably a book that I probably saw a million times and probably just passed it over because I was like, man, he looks like a bug. <laughs> Invincible, you yeah. Know? Or I probably <laughs> thought it was fucking uh, Blue Beetle or something. something and I was like, Blue you know, Beetle like, blows. Like his costume that. doesn't really pop, you know? <laughs> so, and then Omni Man, I'm like, he looks fucking old. He looks like yeah. an old man, right? They like draw, Jay Jonah. <laughs> they, they draw him much nicer looking in the, but in the still, cartoon. He looks like Jay Jonah, right? <laughs> yeah, he does. He does. I mean, he certainly does. It's like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> but, but plus, two, I mean, you know, come on, guys. How many times have we seen another version of hey, Superman? And that's what I was going to say. I was going to say, watch, it's probably just another knockoff of Superman. Right. You, know? right. you can only read so many Look, Superman. Look, there's been right? like, what, Tom Strong? Uh, there's been like what, Hyperion, uh, Hyperion, the Sentry, the Sentry. What was that other one? The one that fought the Hulk. Uh, uh, the one with like the orange hair. Oh shit! He was popular for like a, a while, just like a short period. He was popular. I don't even uh, remember. And then there's like guys out. like Savage Dragon and Pit. Yeah, and Apollo uh, from the uh, oh Apollo, from yeah, the authority. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, man. I don't know. You know, so you know, you're always curious about that. You're like, well, is that what I want to? You know another one you know so but um again it took this for us to watch it and then be like oh very different so. <laughs> uh gabe gabe kind of uh he goes my bro had four first prints of the walking dead in his hands when they released them but put them back because the art was so and so and in black and white and that's the thing me and cm2 probably if we had saw it if we did we're probably like <laughs> it's a book about zombies look i'm my wife's a huge zombie lover i'm not a zombie person and a comic book about zombies right. i, I would have been like man it's fucking stupid yeah. you know <laughs> i mean i can imagine i would have got through the first couple and been like where's the capes like where's the what's thing. going on yeah like, that's the thing like yeah. kirkman's writing is just it's not that great yeah. i've read some stuff and i'm just like man it's, <laughs> he's not a great writer but it's one of those things where that like the idea is really good and solid and, and i kind of know where you're going and then other people get a hold of it like how people say now star wars belongs to the fans because it's like well, that's the, been the right. Bad, the right that's, people got it. That's well, kind of been bad, though. What, not with Dave Filoni, though. No, with well, John Favreau and Dave you, Filoni. Yeah, yeah but, I know what you mean. But JJ kind of took too much of the fans in mind. Right, you know? right. There's got to be a line, definitely. I mean, like I said, The Mandalorian is the perfect example of it, it being is. done right. It's yeah. In, now it, yeah. it's in the hands that it belongs in of people that care about this or whatever, and obviously. Uh, Filoni cultivated this throughout the Clone Wars, and yeah. now, by the way, we didn't talk about this, but the Bad Batch came the out. Bad Batch Did came you out. watch? Yes, I've seen the first twenty minutes. I liked it a lot. Okay. Uh, I'm just trying to finish. Trying to it. finish. I really, really enjoyed it. Um, from what I understand, there is some tie-ins. <laughs> it, it's kind of so. hard for me because, like, when my wife comes home, you know, she wants to see TV, and I'm like, golly, I can't really watch fucking <laughs> uh, TV. I can't watch it. You know. Uh, I know CM's situation is a little different. I know Jess kind of just like goes into her phone or she makes, you know, arts and crafts. And right. Doesn't give a shit what CM's watching. Yeah. Right. Well, if I, if I happen to come and hear the TV, whatever, I tell you guys how often I end up watching shit on my phone in my lunch hour. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like this, like trying to make the big yeah. screen experience for myself. But they changed my hours. So I used to be able to get like about two hours before my wife got home. But now it's like 30 minutes before she gets home. So yeah. I don't have like a lot of time to do kind of watch my nerd shit it is tough it <laughs> is know? it's tough when you're trying to get that time in because it's just you know well, i liked it i liked what i saw from the bad batch they were kind of showing uh uh they were putting some of the revenge of the sit uh, yeah in there yeah so i yeah I liked that was where very it was cool going. i liked it they did it in uh, like a cl clone wars yes they did yeah. it feels very clone wars ish it does uh yeah. and, it, and in fact it got me watching i was watching the clone wars and i stopped and then it got me started again because I was watching the Mandalorian one. Okay. And so then I got back into it now because I want to see some of the bad bats. Mandalorian is great though. Well, that, that is that is premier 
Star Wars. Like, like I said, this became like the the new big line. You know, mm-hmm. this is the this way. Is the way. You know? This is the May. Yeah. Um, they're giving it a whole month. I mean, like, I don't know where you, you know, some people don't, now they like to do the ranking the movies, right? And Rogue yeah. One always gets really up there now. Good, and it, alert, it deserves to yeah. be up there. That was but, amazing. but now it's like, well, we're not going to include the Mandalorian because it's a show. Because if you really count it, it's it should it's a story it's big movie. and it should yeah. be up there in there. It's up there with Empire and it's up there with Rogue One because that story, the the Mando and Grogu story, is, I mean, beyond it's I mean, killer. People that you know, I know people that watch it that don't know nothing about the Clone Wars. They knew nothing of Ahsoka Tano, and they were super geeked. Do you know how much better that is when you know that? We hadn't even really watched all the Clone Wars, but we just know the yeah. lore, and it yeah. was like, oh my god, there she is! Like yeah. it makes it so good. <laughs> Uh, but we're not talking about Star Wars tonight. Uh, yeah, Gabe goes. Uh, luckily, you know, my wife gets into sh- into the shows, even though she doesn't know the stories. She binge watched the Star Wars movie because Mando was so good. So, man, Gabe, man, awesome. that's awesome. That's a huge win. Yeah, it's a huge. <laughs> I, I I try to reel them in a little bit. Like if I'm watching it, you know, like I said, uh, just got really into that episode of like uh, of. Uh, Talking to the Winter Soldier that I was watching, and she was like, she was asking questions and stuff. It was like, oh, okay, I'd already seen it once. I was in my rewatch, and I was like, oh, this is what's going on. And she was like, oh, okay, but she didn't ask to keep watching it. But work, uh, we're working on it, we're working, working on, on, it. on it. So, um, if you see the big bang theory, we got a bunch of pennies around here. Yeah, we have a bunch of, there's a bunch of pennies around yeah. here. So they, they do try though; they got their stuff. Yeah, uh, she's yeah. into the the horror. But like bit. Like my wife likes Doctor Strange. It's like very unusual. She really loves Doctor Strange and the ancient one. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh wow, okay. Very Shit. cool, very cool. The ancient one is pretty okay. badass. The ancient one needs some more fans out there, I think. Yeah. Um, all right, guys, uh, let's get back let's get into back the conversation. Into We're talking all things invincible. Um, and Gabe, stick around, uh, throw us some questions. Yeah, man, give us some questions, give us some thoughts, insights. Um, because I'm probably gonna go pretty hard on some of these characters. Yeah, I really, really want to hear what double has to say on that. And again, we're not gonna talk about it in order, episode by episode. We're just nah. gonna kind of go all over again. I have very specific notes. That I want to just say, hey, what do you think about this? And then we're gonna see what Double A thinks. So hit us up, and, we'll, and we're gonna go uh, go on it from there. And again, the great voice cast, guys, talking all things Invincible. CM Chuck here and Double A with you guys on just another Friday night. Uh, I haven't said it in a while, but it is in fact just another Friday night. And Double uh, A has got the bottle opener, the Green Lantern bottle opener there, kicking ass. Green guy uh, or whatever. Green. Uh, oh, uh, Green, Green Ghost. Green Ghost. Green Ghost. Uh, we're talking uh, what we're talking tonight, which is. Uh, we're calling it the Invincible Man himself, uh, Invincible Mark Grayson, the comic book, uh, which we'll find out later. Was he really invincible? Or was who, he who, really? Who was really the Invincible Man? Was it maybe Nolan, uh, his dad? Uh, guys, great, great show, uh, Invincible on Amazon Prime Video. Again, we're getting no money from them to, <laughs> although, although. Jeff Bezos probably has it to give us uh, if he just even knew who we were, but uh, right here, free well, plus. He's not, I don't think he's a guy anymore. So. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> it's, oh, he's stepped down, I right? I think so, yeah. So. <laughs> I'm sure he ain't broke, you know what I mean? So, uh, yeah. hey, whoever it is over there at Amazon, uh, we just like this show, so keep it going. Renewed, right? Already double yeah, they said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Seasons two and three are going to be coming. Yeah. So if you are a fan of the comic book, are you super geeked over this show? Because uh, I just picked these hardcovers up now because I want to know more. I don't want to wait until season two comes out. I'm going to see and see the differences, uh, which I have heard uh, Robert Kirkman in an interview say that there are some differences. Yeah. So this is yeah. A, they're, they're a little bit different. But um, let me go through a little bit more of my notes here, uh, Double A, so we can talk about some of the other characters. Um, the next character we get is Amber Bennett, who is kind of uh, Mark's love interest, uh, played by, uh, voiced by, excuse me, uh, Zazzy Beats, who I love and adore. Yeah. I love and adore her as Domino in Deadpool uh, 2. <clears throat> she's fantastic as that character. She's wonderful. She's hot. She's fucking super cool. Like I was like, man, you're awesome. Uh, and then she does marvel and then she does dc because she goes and now image she goes to being joker as uh the The love interest arthur flick love interest uh the the one-sided love interest there Uh, and it's not even a love interest in joker more of an obsession uh she does a great job too in that small kind of role uh she's great there but here i didn't even think about that yeah marvel dc and image image, yeah Yeah. which which also now jk simmons walking through all three um but uh yeah so she plays amber bennett this is i love zazzy beats and this is a character that i thought i was gonna like a lot because she was coming off a certain way and i was like oh she's like fun like a fun cool chick and she's going to be uh you know there for mark 
Well, as the show progresses, I just get more and more like I'm like, man, she's kind of a bitch. Look, um, I thought that too, but yeah, Mark is just terrible. Mark does suck at a lot of things. He, he does keeps, suck at a lot of things. He does like he plans things for her and Amber to do for him and Amber to do, and then he does he like bells out because he's doing the superhero shit. Why plan? Why you do all that bullshit? And well, you know, it's like, come on now. <laughs> here's what I don't get to, Double A, and I get being 17, and I get having hormones raging, and I get wanting to hook up and all that. But he also, he lives a much different life. He's a comic book fan. His dad is the top superhero. I know, I know. But don't you think that the instant you got your power, that would be like if someone told one of us, like, you know, hey, tomorrow you have a chance, like a football career. If we wanted to be a quarterback. But then why like, get a girlfriend? That's my if, point. If, I wrote that down. I was like, why are you even messing with yeah. this girl? You know this is going to keep happening. Yeah, yeah. You've read comics, and, right, and, dude? And it just makes it seem like, yeah, he is probably like cheating on her or something, which he's not. But it's just like you come, you keep planning these things about, you know, let's do this, let's do that, and then you're like, oh shit, I'm sorry, I'm late. Yeah, yeah. Man, it's frustrating. Right, and she's uh, frustrated too, which maybe rightfully so. She should have been frustrated. Yeah. And Adam Adam Eve is another character we're going to talk about. Uh, that is uh, voiced by Jillian Jacobs. Uh, I can't remember what it is. I know her from, but I know her from something. But uh, anyway, um, and I didn't and I didn't write it down. Oh, uh, the movie Choke. I love the movie Choke, which is a, a um, based on a book by Chuck Palahniuk. I can never say his name right, but he wrote Fight Club. Um, ah, he's got the okay. movie Choke, uh, okay. who the main star in that one is. Uh, Damn it! Who's our boy that we like from uh, Iron Man Two? The uh, Mickey? no, 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 the other one, the other one. Oh, uh, I always forget his damn name. Sam Rockwell. Sam Rockwell. I love Sam Rockwell, yeah. and he's yeah. uh, fantastic in Choke. If you guys ever get a chance to watch that movie, it's very, 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 very adult. Uh, again, <laughs> Chuck Palahniuk, oh, who does Fight Club. Okay. It's an adult movie, uh, you know for sure. Uh, but it's so much fucking fun, and it's very funny, or whatever. But she is in there um, um, as well. I like the Adam Eve character. She, I is... liked her a lot. Yeah, uh, and I feel like this is almost like we're getting our untapped. You, who did you say compared her to? Oh Starfire? well, like, I thought it was Star Sapphire, but her powers are different. But like, it seemed like she comes off like a Star Sapphire kind of character now from the Green Lantern lore. Now, to me, when what she said was to the dad, when she's kind of arguing with the parents, and she's like, I can literally, like, change. Yeah, her powers things. are pretty damn It cool. was very Wanda-ish. Wanda, yeah. And I was like, yeah. oh, I think this character is going to get explored some more. Yeah. Because she seems to be very powerful, and they didn't show her that So much. I, I kind of write Cliff Notes. She is a bigger character in the comics than okay. she is in the show. So Okay. But, uh, yeah, I mean, Amazing Powers, I liked it. Uh, I liked her character. Yeah, uh, I so, liked her a lot. Cool. Teen team. Teen team. <laughs> teen team. She's drinking out of the I was wondering when she was drinking out of the cup with the TT. I was like, what? Then I on my second viewing, I was like, oh, teen team. Yeah. Um, here's a guy <laughs> that I know that some of you might know. I'm a fan of the show The League, uh, about fantasy football. Now it's it's over now, but I would love to get this entire run because every episode I watched uh, was hilarious. I was watching with Mario actually for a while. Uh our, our cousin Mario, not comic book Mario. Uh, Jason Matzukas voices uh, uh, Rex Splode. Rex. And he's Man. also a fucking uh, super funny voice uh, actor also on uh, Big Mouth on Netflix. He does uh, – um, I was hoping you were going to get into Rex. Yeah, the voice of Jay. Um, and he's got a great podcast called uh, 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 How Did This Get Made? Uh, that he does with oh, Paul wow, Shear. Really? He, yeah, he's, he's on there too. How did this get made with Paul Shear? Okay. Uh, great, 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 funny, funny, fucking funny podcast. He has a really funny take and insight on uh, Snyder Cut, uh, Jason Madzukas. But here he is as Rex Blode, and he is a fucking asshole. He's a douchebag, but you know what, CM? <laughs> He's a character that actually made me laugh pretty loud. Really? Like, every time with his <laughs> fucking comment. Like, he was like a douchebag. He was like an asshole character. Like, I couldn't stand him, but he made me laugh, like, consistently. Like, yeah. every time he was on the fucking screen, he made me laugh, like, really loud. I was like, what the hell? I, I know that when I read this and if he's in the books and everything, it's going to be his voice that I hear. And his delivery on jokes is very it pointed. Is. You know what I mean? Like when he's telling the robot stuff, you know what, what I mean? What the fuck did you get me? Like <laughs> yeah. as a boy. He's like, you're ruining my childhood, <laughs> and that's terrible, you know? Uh, you know, getting beer for their fucking... Uh, like, seriously, he made me laugh. Like, I thought the character was a 
fucking asshole. Yeah. A sorry asshole, but really. He's dating Adam Eve. Someone. And then he's fucking able to duplicate, duplicate. Like, all three of them at the same time. I was like, damn. I know. And I was like, wow. I was like, uh, that was the cheating in the way that you would, like, we used to all say, like, oh, well, you, who do you hook up with? Well, it'd be Mystique, because she could be anybody. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, this guy's like the, the girl that you can, like, well, duplicate. You know, as her name says, she can make like about three of her, you know, about two of her, uh, you know, clones. I guess you yeah. can say she makes more in the fight with. She the, makes uh, more, but in that, in that, you know, cheating team, he's like fucking like three of them. Yeah, <laughs> you know? and it's all her. It's all it's all Kate. It's all the same person, but he's fucking like three of them. Not like, that Adam you know? Eve isn't hot. He's dating Adam Eve. She's super hot, and it's like, well, you know what? The well, fuck, because man? like her, he, he keeps thinking like him and her and Mark are are hooking up. Right, you know, because her and Mark got really close, really super close, yeah. and so Rex is, you know, he's like, "Well, fuck her, then I'm going to cheat too." And you do get this impression <laughs> that there might be like the starting of a love triangle with Mark and the but, two girls, no, it doesn't. but it doesn't really. It they, doesn't. They're just friends, and she does tell him she's like, "That's why I date someone that's a superhero because all the all this stuff is too hard yeah. to explain." But which, Adam Eve just kind of, you know, dumps it. Yeah. Oh, excuse me. Just like that, doubles him, and that was it. Right. <laughs> so right. you really don't right. get, uh, yeah, yeah. You don't get that love triangle, but man, fucking funny character. I like I said, he <laughs> made me laugh a lot. You know. Yep. And he starts. But out he on... wasn't even my favorite character. <laughs> okay. Okay. And he starts out on the teen team, but then a teen team, a, yeah. a major event happens at the end of episode one, and we get right into. Uh, eventually, he gets kind of upgraded to the Guardians of the yes. Globe. Uh, uh, and you know, you get Team Team. You kind of think Team Titans. Team and Titans. Obviously, yeah, Justice is. League is the yeah. is the is the yeah. the, the top. The, you know, uh, where you want to be. Yeah, at. I mean, that so, was that was another obvious thing too. Team Team. I was like Team Titans. Team Titans I was like, yeah. come on, now. yeah. You know? Which is fun because I think Kirkman did that uh, on on purpose because it's like I'm letting your mind go there so that I can take you in another yeah. direction. Or you know what, too? Like I didn't even think about it too. Now that I'm thinking about it, you know, like Star Sapphire, she's the uh, well, not Star Sapphire. Uh, I forgot her name. The one that Robin dates. Uh, she's like that alien. I think her name is Star something. Starfire. Starfire. Yeah. Yeah. And then you got you know robot that has to be from Cyborg. <laughs> you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's kind of like, oh, okay. You know, Teen Titans. You know. Now. <laughs> What do you think about these guys, uh, the, the Mauler twins? I thought they were very Hilarious. fucking funny. Well, first off, it's only one. He, right. he clones himself. No, you're the clone. Yeah, yeah. they don't <laughs> even know which one's a clone anymore. But it's really just one guy, but he's like a geneticist that is able to clone another version of himself, and they get into fights. His own clones. <laughs> yeah. You know, his clone brother, I guess, uh, they become the Mauler twins. And you know what I liked about this character, though, is that uh, it was, they were big and strong, but they were also smart. Yes, very they, they smart. They didn't do the con classic thing where it's like the nerdy, like, small no, guy is the... No. Uh, is the is the scientist. They were like, they were both, they yeah. were very, very good geneticists. Yeah. They were so good, in fact, that they get, you know, used in a way by, by robot they later They do on. get used bad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Muller twins. I like them. I like the story. Uh, you know everything about them. The the them being a geneticist. Uh, them fighting with each other, even though they're the same person. You yeah. Know, and, and like CM says, they kind of get used. They they get blackmailed kind of uh, by the good guys. <laughs> and they have like you a know? really good banter with each other. They, we kind they of do. first see them attacking yeah. the White House. Yes. Right? They're going to yeah. try to kill. The they're president. trying to kill the president. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and they're bitching at each other about who's the real one. Yeah. It's like. I told you we're supposed to come up inside the White House. Oh, you know geez. what I mean? And he's like, yeah, yeah. You know, but he was like, we're supposed to, you know, people will be more afraid of what they see as doing damage and getting <laughs> inside the White House. Uh, and this is also where you get the debut of, and this is like episode two, maybe. Uh, you get the debut of the Guardians of the Globe, who you could easily consider. <laughs> Again, it's Justice League. The Justice but League of America. The Guardians of the Globe. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and you get, which ain't a bad name. That's, I was yeah, like, wow, that's name. actually yeah. a really good name. I was like, it's really Justice close League. to the Guardians of the Galaxy. Galaxy also. You know What's up, I mean? Guardians of the Globe? I was like, okay, Justice League. You yeah. Know? I was like, yeah. all right. Uh, that's a cool name, I guess. Yeah. Which they kind of dropped the of America, right? It used to always be Justice League yeah. of America, the JLA. And now it's, well, now it's just like the Globe, though. It's like everywhere. Right. Know, so, And we get some pretty cool characters we meet here. Uh, their leader is a guy called the Immortal. Which I was like, uh, you know, see him. So I didn't want to really tell you until mm -hmm. today, but I was like, it kind of seemed like he was a mixture of Vandal Savage and Superman. 
What's Vandal the, Savage, remind he's me. He's the I'm one not... that's the immortal, that's lived. That was Attila the Hun, was Julius Caesar. He lived through all those times. He was we, a caveman. We get some of that at the end. Yes. They show him when he kind of. that's you know, what kind of made me reinforce it even more okay. was that. I was like, wow, this kind of was like, he powerful? He was strong in DC. Uh, yeah, and he's come out in a few of the Justice League Unlimited episodes. Okay, or some really good ones, really, really good ones. But he's immortal, and he's been all those characters throughout history. But then he's got like kind of like the strength of Superman. Okay, you know, so okay. I was kind of like, wow, he kind of makes Vandal Savage and Superman yeah. together. So I was kind of like, huh, that's interesting. That's pretty. I thought we're, we're kind cool. of like. We're like, well, Omni, Omni Man, Superman, but who the hell is immortal? Remember, right. we were like talking about right. that to ourselves. We were like, who the fuck's immortal? Supposed yeah. to be based on. Yeah, and I had said kind of like a Thor because he seemed like he was strong, but maybe not as but strong. But then I as... disagreed with CM because it was like, it's so Justice League. It's it's I very mean, Justice League. Yeah, it's just a yeah. knockoff of Justice yeah. League. I was like, it can't be Thor uh, because everyone else is just, <laughs> it's too close. It's too close right. to. Right. The fucking Justice League. Like I say, he doesn't even try with the names. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. Darkwing was is the only. The, yeah, Darkwing. Darkwing. I was like, Darkwing. Batman, <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, War Woman. You know what? He did better with the diversity. There were two women on the team. And there but there was, were lesbians. Uh, right. <laughs> Which I'm not saying there was anything wrong, but it's like, you know. <laughs> now, now, guys, spoiler alert again. I can't say it enough. There's a, there's a major event that happens in episode one, but. Uh, Let's just, since the, the Guardian Globes become no more. But how about when that realization moment when uh, Green Ghost is like, she knows like they're fucked, right? And it reminded me so much of when What's Her Name dies in uh, in Matrix. And she's like, not like this. Oh, like, not like yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. That felt just like that. And then she gets the fucking hand right through her face. You Boom. know what? That's a scary moment, though, when they all meet up together <laughs> and they're like, who, who the fuck caught us? You know? Yeah. And they're like, well, I didn't call. Well, I didn't call. Who called us? And then Omni Man pops up. And he's not, he's supposed to be like with them. Well, he's a good guy, you know, that always shows up when they're around, but, you know, he's not a guardian of the globe. Right. He's kind of by himself. And when they see him, they're like, holy shit. And man, a great battle, a great scene. One of the most intense scenes I've ever seen. It just develops and see him. I, I was like blown away by this part, this whole fight scene. It mm -hmm. was beautiful. It was amazing. You know why? It was brutal. This is what this cartoon did. It's an animated series. Shouldn't it? That's an insult, right? It did very well. Number one, in the scenes where the teams are working, they do something really cool. And they do this throughout the series. They try to mitigate the death. They try to save civilians. Yeah. Hey, yeah. you're fast. Go, yeah. go do this. Yeah. Get, save people. You know they do that a lot. Even when even when robot takes over and they get the new team, they're like, "Like hey, Samson says that." Yes, yeah. they start working on strategy. Yeah. And the other thing that's cool is they use their powers together. Yeah. It's like, oh, yeah. you're really, you know, the elastic guy, the yeah. Martian, Martian man, Martian man, who's yeah. kind of like plastic man. Yeah. He wraps up the guy, ties up your appendages. I know I'm stronger than you, but let me d d try to stop uh, to stop you for, for a little like bit, a few seconds. And then everyone yeah. starts to do their licks, yeah. and then everyone's doing their, you know, the the yep. the dark dark wing yeah. is doing his. You know, batarangs and yeah. explosions or whatever. It's like ah, that's very good teamwork. It was yeah. what I loved about the Incredibles movie so much. When I saw part one, I can remember thinking to myself, "When the Fantastic Four movie comes out, the first one, the first one hadn't come out yet." I was like, "If they don't use their powers like this, it's <laughs> gonna suck." And I was one hundred percent right because they didn't use their powers at all like that. From the moment where she's creating a force field for them to the other ones making a parachute out of the elastic body to then a rubber boat. I'm like, ah, look at how cool they're using the powers. That's what you got to do when you're doing a team thing. Yeah. It's like, why the fuck do you need a team? If like Superman can handle it all. It's like, no, you don't because then there's a threat like this and then you do, everyone is doing their part. And I thought that was very cool. And you know, they held their own for a little bit. They did, but it's just it was uh, not enough. It shows Omni Man is just so far beyond all of them. Right, it's, it's fucking nuts. Right. Uh, the Guardians of the Globe are the top team. Yeah, and, you know they're an unstoppable force. Like CM was saying, they're just when they're all together, they're they're unstoppable. But you can't do nothing against when a guy is just faster than you, stronger than you, smarter mm -hmm. than you. You know, it's just. And they fall under what is called the uh, Global Defense Agency. And this is kind of what Double A was saying. GDA. Is that the GDA. That Omni-Man doesn't operate with them. He is independent. You know, I mean, he, does, he operates free of them. And the, but he'll work with them. 
you know, they'll help each other out on like global threats, threats to the entire planet and uh, things that maybe one can't handle on their own. And the Guardians of the Globe do work under, they work under, they're with the GBA. Yeah, they're, they're a government force. And that's yeah. where we meet uh, Cecil Stedman, who is uh, kind I of this. I like Cecil. I like Cecil Man, a lot, Cecil too. Cecil is badass. Yeah, he's kind of scarred <clears throat> up um, and uh, very interesting character, very kind of gruff also, seems to know a lot. Um, who does he remind, who would you say, he, does he remind you of anybody? Kind of a, his own guy, right? Uh, like, you know what? <clears throat> I thought he was kind of like uh, the guy from Vault, Vault yeah. America. Yeah, that you guy, that kind of character. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I know you did your dream casting. That was that. Well, somebody else put that up, and I thought it was a very good okay. Scott Glenn. They said Scott Glenn was. See, I didn't think about Scott Glenn. That was a good choice, but I kept thinking Guy Pierce for me. I could definitely see that. That'd I was like, Guy casting. Pierce would have been great. Yeah, would be great really for a live great. action. Yeah, because uh, I'm watching yeah, that right. show, Mayor of Easttown. Okay, and he's he looks old in that, in that oh, show, okay. but he looks like a Cecil. Right away, him. I got visions of him and uh, how he's so authoritative in uh, Rules of Engagement Rules with of Samuel L. Jackson. Yeah. I love yeah. him in that man. He's yeah. like, and he plays an American because he's yes. English, right? Yes, he is. Yes, yeah, he is. he's got a thick accent. Yes, too. he is. He's yeah. a really great American. Um, now, but, uh, Cecil <clears throat> is your your government like boss mm -hmm. that uh, knows. Everything about everything. everything. Yeah. Okay. And you know, he he says something like very weird, like I guess in the later episodes about like the lights. Like yeah. that's how they're being invisible. That's right. That you they're know? um there's something in the water that yes, they, they the give, water. They yes. give something into the Americans in the water yes. that doesn't allow us to see a certain a spectrum certain of spectrum. light. And yeah. that makes uh <clears throat> that makes them because have like a bit invisible invisibility power. Yeah, because like well, like him, for instance, he has like a teleportation power or something. Somehow he can teleport. It's like a device on their wrist. But like the other soldiers always are like invisible, right? Except for Omni Man. Omni Man can see them mm -hmm. when they're when they're around, but uh, it's a really cool character. I like the Cecil character immediately. Mm. I thought there was going to be something fishy about him because they all hated him, uh, but I liked him right away. Yeah, yeah, you do. And he's he's uh, voiced by a guy. I did not write his name down, and I should have. I don't know why I didn't. But uh, this guy comes out in uh, Hateful Eight. He's one of the guys oh, in the Hateful okay. Eight. From, okay. So, so this actor's worked with Tarantino. So that's pretty cool. Uh, they mention Fight Force, another team, but we don't we ever never see, see them. them. Yeah, yeah, and they also mention a couple of times the Lizard League is like a bad guy team or whatever. So, but we don't see them. Uh, we get introduced to a guy that I, at first reminded me of Hellboy because the way he looks. Yeah, yeah, but he's yeah. maybe more of like a Constantine because he's kind of like a demon detective, Damian Darkblood, um, and he's and he he talks kind of like Rorschach. And he kind of has a detective vibe yeah. like Rorschach, the coat, yeah. trench coat, the hat. The old 50s looking detective, right. you know, you the know. Columbo, if you want to say almost. Right when know. he started talking, uh, I immediately thought of like, uh, help myself to some beans, <laughs> human bean <laughs> juice. You know, that's how Rorschach was always very like few words to get his points across. And um, he's voiced by one of our favorites, <sighs> Clancy, Clancy Brown. Brown. Yeah. Uh, the Kurgan in Highlander. Um uh, Shawshank. Shawshank. He's yeah. uh, Byron Hadley. Byron. Yeah. Uh, he was Lex Luthor in Superman animated series. The voice actor of the Lex Luthor. Voice actor of Lex Luthor. Man, very intimidating. Very intimidating yeah. voice. Uh, but also is Mr. Krabs. So, <laughs> which he probably made more money from SpongeBob than anything else he's done. And that yeah. easily my favorite SpongeBob character, Mr. Krabs, for sure, because <laughs> uh, we're both cheap, 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 cheap. <laughs> so. Um, that was cool. Um, but a cool character too. I liked uh Damien every time he comes uh the breath. Mm -hmm. uh, it gets cold. And then you know, what's kind of interesting too is like you know, there's some rumors going around about Omni Man, right? And uh so Debbie kind of starts investigating like Damien and she sees that Damien doesn't lie about stuff and he yeah. usually finds the truth. Uh and when he's telling her some of the stuff he's telling her about Omni Man. She starts believing when she starts reading through the stories, kind of like this dude doesn't lie and yeah. he gets the truth out. And you know, he's not in it for bad, good. He, for some reason, he, he's a demon from hell that wants to seek justice on this planet, you know. Yeah. And Cecil knows all about him, uh, doesn't really like him at all. Mm -hmm. Omni Man does not like him at mm -hmm. all. Uh, I was like, wow, okay, that's weird. <laughs> yeah, and he's um, 
And then Damien even says, like, Cecil has, like, a special place <laughs> in hell that he'll never see him. Yeah. I'm like, oh, wow. And he's asking questions that we as the audience know the answer it's to. It's a mystery. Like, Cecil had wrote, it's kind of a mystery. It's like, was Omni Man, you know, was someone controlling him? Or, or, or what or really happened? What, what caused happened? Him to what caused attack? him to that massacre? You know, imagine this, guys. Imagine, and we kind of see this a little bit in Snyder Cut, and we obviously in the original as well. That's the pivotal scene is where it's Superman versus the entire Justice League, and it kind of it, it wasn't it one shows. sided, but it was no. Pretty... But but here it shows what a Superman can do to a team when they're really focused and really right. want to fuck you up. They're right. gonna fuck you up. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. there is no Batman discovering kryptonite. There's nothing like that. It's <laughs> this guy just waging war and hell on this team, and you're just like, "Fuck!" What this version, what this version happens in this show uh, with the Omni Man versus Darkwing is he pretty much grabs him by the fucking leg and slams him one way, then slams him the other way. Oh, that was brutal. Until his head explodes. Man, that was brutal. I mean, and you're like. Yeah, that's how that shit would go down. Everyone that's always trying to fight that argument. I'm like, no. there's a lot of that. That move gets used a lot too. They grab you by one leg, they fucking slam you, yeah, was, slam you into a wall. I'm yeah. like, if someone has that kind of power, they're gonna fuck you up that way because they can. You know what I mean? So, um, so one guy beat like the entire or killed the entire defensive system that the planet has against right. big threats. Just this Superman, this super killer, all of a sudden that just either snaps or there's something there's something yeah going on. we don't know is he being mind controlled is but then there... when he goes back to the family he's normal he's nolan again you yeah. know he's like you know i they were my friends and you know we're gonna get whoever did this because apparently he has amnesia or whatever yeah you know he doesn't remember what happened <laughs> he, he, he does at the end fall down after they're all done being you know fucking destroyed destroyed you know killed you know <laughs> murdered and then it's like you know he falls down too so the the people that come you know the the gda they come and they're like what the hell the happened here happened? all the heroes yeah. are here only one is left standing and those are the kind of questions that damien darkblood is asking uh and of course he plants that seed in into uh nolan's wife into nolan's wife, wife kind and, of saying hey and you're ask thinking, yourself you know yeah and you're thinking too that he's trying to tell cecil but cecil as we find out already knew what happened right he knew right. it yeah. Wait, he just didn't want Damien to spoil it yet. Yeah, they definitely suspected it, but it wasn't like uh, you well, know, Cecil they, knew who it was. Yeah, but it's just like why and, and yeah, what right. the fuck snapped in him? And what were they going to do about it? It was like because Cecil does take like pretty like he's like man, he fooled us all, damn. Mm-hmm. You know, and you know, I thought I knew the guy. You yeah, know? like he really kind of takes it pretty hard when he finds out. You know that it's just all him. Yeah, because he's been with Debbie for twenty years. Mark seventeen, so it's like they were together. I guess yeah. three years until yeah. before they had a kid or whatever. You know, so which is another thing I kind of wanted to ask you about Double A. Like, you know, once we get to know about Nolan and his intentions and things like that, it's like, why even do that? Like, why start a family? Why not just like live it in is like weird? A- and I kind of thought Guardians of the Galaxy Part Two. Uh, ah, with, with ego, yeah, that maybe he did really fall in love with her, but, okay. But his mission was always bigger than his own life, yeah, you know what I mean? Like, right, it was always going to be that way, it doesn't matter, okay. And, and it, it does kind of suck when he when you know the, the ending scene because Debbie's like crying, and you're just like, yeah. wow, like, like it really didn't mean anything to him. He's like, I'm gonna live for a long time. She's yeah. gonna be like a, a piece of like small history in my life. It, you know, like yeah, like he. There was still part of Omni Man that didn't let himself get attached. Yeah, you know, well, it was really, like okay, cool. I need a partner for like twenty years, and boom, right? Okay. The really rough part of it, I guess. <clears throat> I guess when he says he was like, "I do love your mom, but like a pet." Yeah, and I thought about it, and I was like, "Yeah, but when you love a dog, you do really love a dog." But then I said, "Well, no." He lives so long, it'd be more like a goldfish. That's what I'm saying. Like gold, I can't remember any goldfish that I love so much. You that's know what, what I'm mean? saying. Like for him, it's just like it's not gonna matter. For you, for like when he's telling Mark, it's like no, like yeah. none of this shit matters. Yeah. Yeah. You know? I, I think it's hard for us to conceptualize it. It because, is because you know, we only like like humans, I think, only live about 75 years. Right. right? I think it's gone up. I can't remember like yeah. 80, but it 80 is like nothing compared to a guy who's gonna live for 
uh, thousands of years, apparently, or whatever. It would it be was. like if somebody said, "Like, what was your favorite visit to Waterburger?" <laughs> You'd be like, "I don't know. I fucking I been to Waterburger a bazillion yeah, times. Yeah, like, I don't know. was there any time that stood out?" I'm like, "No, they're mainly all pretty good. I mean, like, you know, but look, it's it was not like, like it was like Nolan knew he was going to be here for a while, so he probably made himself comfortable for what it was going to be. And then, but when the time came to actually do the mission, he was like, "Yeah." yeah. Or maybe it was just to, like you said, to make a make a an offspring or whatever, you know. What maybe I mean? that too, you know. Maybe that too. But, um, you know, yeah. So, so we get this mystery. We just don't know why he did it, you know. Mm -hmm. But on the man, uh, again, a great scene. He fucking destroys the Guardians of the Globe. They have a big ass funeral for the Guardians. Everyone's like shitting their pants because yeah. But Omni Man promises he'll be here and he'll still protect us yeah. blah 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 you know yeah he speaks at their funeral but now Cecil is kind of like okay we gotta get a new guardians going you know and he was really impressed with team team yeah on that you know a alien invasion that happened you the know flaxons yeah. he was very impressed with him and he asked robot to be the new leader of the team yeah and so he's he's kind of tasked with picking a new team so they kind of have these tryouts which is pretty cool um and uh throughout this like we're kind of seeing like nolan and mark are training you know a little bit mark's uh, learning his powers and come, he becomes invincible he gets his costume he becomes invincible I thought they rushed that too much a little bit too rushed you thought yeah okay I was like, interesting. wow you know a guy that's supposed to be strong and durable and like already you're you're sending him out just like that like golly yeah. like you think all the man would kind of teach him more right more fighting you know, because he gets his ass kicked. Oh, yeah. Lot. And he's not a great fighter. You know what and I mean? It's he like, freezes at first, too. Mm -hmm. You know? <clears throat> and he just doesn't know, like, what he's doing what a he's lot of doing. the time. He's like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, he's uh, a scared 17 year old human. Mm -hmm. You know, not not this strong ass, you know, half alien that he's supposed to be. Right. You know, right. he freezes. He freaks out. And there's very little instruction from Nolan in way of that. Right. Like, okay, like, hey, when you're kind of in the heat of the fight or yeah. whatever, you know what I mean? So, <clears throat> you know, but, um, yeah, Robot's recruiting this team or whatever, and they want to recruit Invincible or whatever. He's not really sure if he wants yeah, to Yeah, he's it. kind of like Omni Man. He's like, yeah, I think we operate on my own. Yeah. 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 And this, again, guys, is like the first two, three episodes, maybe. You're getting some of this. But then we get to this cool – there's been this alien, these aliens called the Flaxes. They've come back like <laughs> three funny, times, yeah. right? Uh, well, then by the last time that they come, we see Omni-Man go over there to go take care yeah. of them. And uh, it's a little bit of makes you wonder what they're, the Viltrumites are capable of because Nolan fucking tears it up over there, man. Like He is like a one-man wrecking crew throughout that flex and planets entire thing and like these guys have come back like time goes slower there I think it, yeah say. it does yeah it does yeah. yeah so like when they've been gone for like i don't know three days uh, the robot says oh well for them it was like 30 years they've had time to advance yeah, because the, the fucking emperor keeps like aging every time he keeps coming right back. <laughs> right right and they're kind of giving the 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 teen team fucking a hard time and even invincible a hard time they are they're they're a mess team teams like a fucking mess when they're fighting they're everywhere they're all over the place and they just get lucky because they die of old age here they yeah age real super quick here yeah on this planet and that's the only why the only reason why team team wins and rex is like yeah it wins a win yeah you know, exactly like, <laughs> like fucker you know you, you guys are getting your ass kicked you big know? time they only died because you know of the yeah they only died because of the fucking old age that that was happening and I didn't realize the guys we just talked another 30 minutes. So uh we'll let that process see how much got cut out. And if not, we're just gonna have to cut it all together somehow, and make it sound somewhat uh sound you know <laughs> coherent somehow. But anyway, uh, a little bit of comment here that yeah, Gabe says she's needy though. She got demanding too early in their relationship. Gabe, uh, Amber, right? Yeah, yeah Gabe, I, I don't know. I mean Again, you're you're saying that yeah, you'll be there, you'll be there, but it's like, come on, you know, Mark Mark is like hours late, you know, he's not just like thirty minutes late, he's like hours late. He promises to walk her home, he promises to do this and to have dinner with their you know, the mom and everything, you know. Well, an interesting thing too to me is that like, you know, Adam Eve tells him he he's like, If you're really gonna get serious, like let her know who you are so that yeah. way you don't have this problem. Yeah. But 
marks on the fence. Like I'm like, well, you seem to really like her, but you're like not willing to tell her right away yeah. or whatever. So not, not not and again that too. I felt like they kind of played real fast and loose with the identity revealing. I'm like, okay, like by the end, he's got a handful of people that know who he is. I know that like, was weird. Okay. Yeah. Um, but then the other thing is too is like later on we find out that when when Ember says, uh, I knew blah blah, like still fuck off. I'm like, really? Like like no, one, that part I didn't agree with because she was like, I you should have told me right away who you were. Like, no. And I'm like, yeah, like I have things I have to protect too. Like you obviously don't understand or whatever. But again, that kind of goes back to like, then why the fuck is Mark even doing that? Like, I would have broke it off with her like a long time ago. Like, right, oh. right. And yeah. it seemed like you know, not that he was trying to go for Adam, uh, Adam Eve, but there was like a, a something developing or whatever. Like they could have could have gone that hated, route. But I mean, he was like really into Ember. Like, a yeah, lot. he was or whatever. You know what I mean? But like, yeah, he kept dropping the ball over and over again. Bad. And and it made Real me feel bad. like too. It made me see like. And he does show that selfishness at times, whatever, where he's like, well, I got to fix things with her. I got to do this. I'm trying to ignore this. You know, he tells, you know, Nolan, can I, can I go to the date or whatever? And I'm like, I thought you wanted to be a superhero so bad. Yeah, that's what Nolan kind of said. You says. know what I mean? I'm like, I don't think that you wanted it as bad as you thought you wanted it because you're obviously not pursuing it, you know? <laughs> uh, great comment here. Gabe says, uh, wait for Battle Beast to come back. That guy is crazy. Yes, uh, we also. I want to. I have it real big on my notes here. Uh, where is it at? Here, it's on my. I have it like the center of my page, I think. Uh, but yeah, I wrote it. I wrote it huge. Uh, gave on my notes. If you can see, it says "Battle Beast" because <laughs> I want to talk to Double A about that and hear more about what you guys think about him. Um, let me check and see how we are doing on the. Uh, Oh, we're good to go. Oh, we're good to go. So yeah. we're gonna get another another block in here. Um, Gabe, uh, who are who are your favorite characters? Now I know you. It sounds to me like you're doing. You've done both. You did the comic book, and now you're now you're doing the show. Um, is that how it went? Did you do the comic book and then you did the show? Like, were you anticipating this one? Like, oh, it's finally getting a show. That's how I felt about Preacher. I was a Preacher fan for such a long time, and then when Preacher finally got a show, I was really excited only for it to come out to be like way different. So uh, let me know where, where you stood on, on that stuff. Um, I'd, li I'd like to know that for sure. All right, guys, but well, let's get back into the recording part and bring you right back in for our next block of Invincible. Guys, sorry, you probably heard us talk right into yeah. uh, our explanation yeah. there. So I know we were talking about a few things. Uh, try to bear with us. If not, you can always catch the YouTube version completely uncut and unabridged and hear everything that you might have missed. It was probably just a few seconds. I think I don't know how long we were talking. We I talked into the I talked we talked into the break because I wasn't watching the time. Which you've known if you're a fan of the show, I do that quite often. So <laughs> I'm trying to get better at monitoring that. But uh, some great comments uh, from. Uh, uh, Gabe Flores in the house uh, joining us here, uh, a fan obviously of the comic book and and the show that we're talking about tonight, which is we're calling it the Invincible Man, uh, but it is all about the show uh, Invincible on Amazon Prime Video, guys. If you haven't watched it, go check it out. Uh, you're done with Falcon and Winter Soldier. You're done with Wandavision. Um, you're maybe done with the Bad Batch, and you're like you know something that's maybe in that vein, uh, superheroes at least. Uh, uh, Amazon Prime's uh, Invincible will not disappoint, man. It is so damn good. And if you took a chance on something like The Boys and were okay with that, like, holy shit, this is like a ramped up adult superhero uh, show. Uh, Invincible, it's animated, but it's right there, right there on par with that. And it is uh, very, very cool. Um, I was watching it week to week. I told Double A last week i hear on the show i said we gotta do this man i, I really want you to see it and so let's talk about it and he did and that's what we're talking about uh right now so uh, we were just kind of talking about amber the love interest and how it's like you know do you love her do you hate her i even read some articles that were kind of coming about they're like man like uh we don't want to hate amber but like it's like <laughs> she's just you know because because like double a said Mark is like a fuck up too. Like it's he like is. he's like, Bad. like I'm like like that dude like sucks in his and, and this is what I was kind of saying is I was like I was like to me once I got the powers I would have been like and again maybe I'm thinking in my almost forty year old mind not my surgery month but it would have been like this is what I've been waiting for this is the damn way like this is what I'm gonna do now. I'm gonna be focused on this it's like you cannot be out saving the world you should know from your dad when you have like a chick or whatever. And it's like, he's trying to, he's too soon trying to have his cake and eat it too. I'm like, dude, at least superhero, at least 
have a year one. You know what I mean? You got to have a year yeah, one. Yeah, like you're not even like that. getting your groove first. You know? Yeah, and like and like several times before he's even really like been at it, he's trying to like give it up. You know, he's like, oh, maybe I don't even want to do this. Or whatever. I'm like, but you know, fuck? I I really didn't mind that because I was like, that would be a teenager, like right. thinking. You know, True. not like uh, you know somebody in their twenties, thirties, or they already have established what their mindset is. You know, this is a 17 year old kid thinking, do I really want to do this? You know? right. <laughs> now that I have it, I know what it really yeah. is like, and I can't have this chick cause I'm always running yeah. off, you know, but um, here we also get introduced uh, in some of these early episodes to a, an organization called the coalition of planets, an alien named Alan, Alan visits the alien. earth and uh, him and uh, Mark have a quick tussle and uh, he's, he's in the wrong place. He's supposed to be at, Iraq, yeah. not Earth. Uh, very funny voice by Seth Rogen. Um, we've been talking about the robot from the uh, um, the new Guardians of the Globe, formerly of, of Teen Team. Uh, his voice is by Zachary Quinto. Uh, if you know him from he was Spock in the the new Star Treks that J.J. Uh, Abrams did, uh, I think he's a great actor, um, and he he did a great job as the voice of the robot. Oh yeah, yeah. and we talked about yeah. um, um, the uh, the Flaxons and how Omni Man took care of them, and we talked about Replicate and Rexplode already, and how they hooked up, and uh, he was hooking up with the uh, replicants of her, I guess, or whatever, and and he, get, he gets caught red handed in the yeah. shower by by Adam Eve, and it was like that was it for her. She was like, I'm done with them, and when they pick the new team. Uh, she doesn't want to be on the team because they're both going to be picked on the team too. And she's like, no, nah, I don't think so. <laughs> so. Kind of a funny, uh, not funny, but sticky situation. Uh, we also meet at this time, Black Samson. Yeah. Uh, who is voiced by uh, King Ezekiel himself, Walking Dead alumni, uh, uh, Kari Payton, a very distinct voice also. Um, really cool soundtrack in this show, guys, if you're, if you're into kind of, you know, uh, that kind of music, but I, I wrote down several songs I thought were pretty cool as I was watching it. Um, what I wanted to tell you about was um, we also have an episode where Mark goes to Mars, right? Yes. Uh, yes, he does. He's supposed to be protecting the astronauts. Yeah, it's our first time that we're going to land on Mars. They ask Omni-Man. He says no. Mark's like, I'll go. Yeah, because Mark's like, I mean, Omni-Man's like, no, this is stupid. Uh, you know, what if something happens on Earth? Right. And I'm like, right. fucking Mars. You yeah, know, like, he's no. telling Cecil, like, no, I'm not going to do that. Uh, Mark's like, well, I'll go, whatever. So this is cool. When he meets the Martian Emperor there, Mark, whatever, did you get his voice? Yeah. That uh how do you say it here? Uh Jamon Jamon I, Honusu. Yeah. Uh, I was having trouble with his I, I mentioned know. him before on this show. But I was like, hey, that's a pretty cool, uh, pretty cool name or it whatever. Is. It is. Uh, uh yeah. That that's attached to the show is what I mean. Like, you know, we know him from Gladiator, yeah. Constantine, yeah. uh you know, back in the nineties, he would have been my pick for Black Panther. Even you know? in Guardians of the Galaxy. That's right. You know, like yeah. Captain Marvel. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So yeah, very cool. And what about this, Double Eight? When they talk about the sequids, he's like, Oh, these sequids, if they yeah. get on you, they'll take over the whole the whole race. You know, yeah, you it's kind of what keeps all of them kind of like being deadly, you know, and there's like one brain controlling. And they almost look like a face hugger, right? Like almost like an yes, like from, from uh, yes, alien. Yeah. So in this episode we see it and they don't really kind of address it really again to the very very no, end oh yeah but one of the sequids gets on one of the astronauts the astronauts or whatever and it all and they tell you they're like no they'll take over the whole yeah. once they get infect one and then they also infect one of the martians so we see that yeah. too so you're like what yeah. the fuck you know what i mean yeah. like it's a pretty crazy uh transition right there um earlier we didn't mention it but he comes back we meet the character titan he's like uh um, i like titan a lot how about that fight I like that a lot. I wrote this down. What if Thing used his powers yeah. like Titan? Yeah. Titan fucking kicked ass. I like the character. He was grabbing guys, smashing them into his body yeah. because he's made out of like stone. Uh, and he reminded me of kind of the thing. The thing. Yeah. And his voice by the great Mahershala Ali, uh, Oscar winner and soon to be Blade. Uh, so I was like, damn, this cast got everybody, man. So it was a really great cast. What did you think of his manipulation of Invincible? Um, I, I was kind of like, golly, I was like, I like this character a lot. And then when he did that, I was like, oh. Yeah, yeah. But hey, he did it for Seth Lee. Uh, maybe. But, but it, maybe. Also, it also did show, what did he do? He used, he was like, I'm not more powerful than you, but you're not, maybe, you're not seasoned. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, you don't know what you're doing yet. Yeah. So you got taken advantage of or whatever. Basically, he has I invincible mean, stocks. Yeah, in this episode. Yeah, in a in another 
excellent, brutal battle, yeah. guys. Uh, Titan and Invincible, because you know, basically, Inv Titan works for this guy, Machine Head. <laughs> yeah, and which is like, literally a fucking machine head. And he tells him, "Is that a real name?" There's a lot of funny jokes like that throughout the show too. I that thought are, you know, chipping though. Yeah, <laughs> like when I saw this fucking guy. <laughs> There's a lot of like these funny jokes that are kind of like tongue in cheek, like about superheroes. Like they make a joke earlier on when they're fighting at the uh, um, Mount Rushmore about. Uh, oh yeah, don't ruin it. The, yeah. yeah, the one liners, you know what I mean? And and he's like, oh, none of these sound good. You know what I mean? Like these one liners are no good. <laughs> but uh, anyway, Titan pretty much says like, hey, Invincible, I need help. I'm pretty much like a hired muscle for this so guy. It's kind of like the like a low area, low rent area. Maybe like, like the I, I kind of thought of yeah, I, that's what I thought of. House I thought of Hell's, I thought of Kingpin. Yeah, yeah, and uh, he's asking Invincible like, oh, you know, you only go after the big problems, but you don't want to help the the real people that need help. So he kind of gets suckered into that. Yeah. Omni Man tells him, "Don't fall for the bait." Right. You know, you're too important. Let some of the other heroes deal with that bullshit. Yeah. You know? But Mark, you know, him being 17 and you know, kind of feeling guilt. You yeah. know, agrees to help Titan against this, and man, he he almost dies for his efforts. You know, it's brutal. It's very brutal. I was and like, Ooh. we get introduced to a really uh, cool character who we kind of talked about during the break, which was um, Battle Beast, yeah. who's like a fucking white lion, yeah. voiced by another great warrior. Michael Dorn, you might know as Worf, Worf. in Star Trek, uh, the next generation and the movies. Um, man, this guy kicked major fucking ass. Am I right? Double A. Like, bad. I was like, holy fuck. Bad. In fact, he just dips because he's like, no, there's no competition here. I'm out. Like, I was promised, like, there would be worthy competition and, here. And that kind of threw me off mark for a little bit because I was like, dang, you really shouldn't be caught invincible. You just got your ass beat. Yeah. Bad. Yeah. I mean, real bad. And it was. I mean, that guy was a fucking badass, and they had to get kind of bailed out by the uh, uh, the new Guardians of the Globe. Yeah, they come. And they don't do so hot. They don't either. They get their yeah. fucking asses beat, too, and Battle Beast is getting some... He fucking smashes Monster Girl with these two rocks. Bad, takes off she her almost face. dies. Yeah. yeah. He fucks them up, man. I mean, like, it, it, it's a pretty uh, great... Mark gets really bad. Black Samson really mm -hmm. gets hurt a lot. Monster Girl gets hurt very bad. So he fucks them up bad, real bad. Um, I wrote something down here. I wanted to just mention it real yeah. quick. But did you notice that the high school they go to? They go to Reginald Vell Johnson High School. Oh, nice. Okay. Which is... Carl Winslow yeah. from yeah. Uh, Family Matters. Yeah. We also all love him from Die Hard, obviously. Well, when he meets the principal, did you hear him go, oh, hey, Principal Winslow? No. That's the principal's name. Oh. And it's actually voiced by Reginald Vell ah, Johnson. Okay. So it's pretty cool. Okay. So that's like a big old Family Matters thing uh, <laughs> that comes out, which I think they said that like uh, Robert Kirkman is a big Family Matters fan, <laughs> uh, as well as with the other people. So I thought, thought that was pretty cool. I've been right. I was writing down all the major voices that were there because I was like, man, what a great, great, outstanding voice cast. Um, so um, I have here, which we kind of talked about a little bit when we just talked about the Guardians of the Globe got really trounced. Oh, yeah, by, they died. Yeah, yeah, uh, it seemed like, yeah, I, th I thought, uh, what's her name was dead, uh, be, uh Monster Girl. I thought, oh, she was oh, that I'm, I'm yeah. sorry, I'm sorry, I thought you were talking about the old Guardians, uh, yeah, the, the, the new the Guardians, new Guardians in, that, in that fight yes. with uh, yes, Titan. they all get fucked up. Like I said, Black Samson gets really fucked up, mm -hmm. uh, Monster, Monster Girl, Girl really gets almost dies, you know, and yeah, you know, Mark, oof. Mark gets brutally beat down. Yeah. Bad. And he hits him with that big mace yes. glove he has just like on his chest. Yeah. And you see him just like, just, <sighs> yeah. his blood comes out of his like, mouth. You're like, fuck. I mean, he may be invincible in the sense that he can take a beating, but I mean, is he invincible and, oh. and not getting beat? I don't think so. No. He's getting his ass. He shows the line in this, in this series that no, he's not. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So uh, then we find out, you know, after the garden is kind of clear house and Battle Beast leaves, uh, tied in kind of reveals his true self like you know because they arrest machine head to get the chip back and we find out that titan just used invincible uh so he can get the the spot the yeah. criminal spot kind know? of like the new kingpin you yeah. know what I mean? so that's yeah. kind of it's 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 i was like oh that that was kind of a heartbreaker for me yeah uh because i really like titan and i was like oh damn 
it, it's I'm fucked like, up, but it was like it kind of showed too, like wow, this is how I know, you know like, Mark is vulnerable yeah. in the sense that he's not familiar. And, with these and that's that after Omni man, they tell him, yeah. you know, leave it alone. Uh, and what's what's kind of interesting too is that you know it's a situation where he's not afraid to even show him like, oh, this is where my kid yeah. is, this is my wife, and he asked him like, like, was that your? That was your daughter, right? Like he's figuring it out, and it's like he let you see that. Yeah, he, he let did. you, see, and he even he asked did. him like, what's her name? And then yeah. he's like. Oh, her name's this. It's like, you, you know, know, you know, some people be like, don't, don't fucking worry about it. Like it ain't none of your yeah. fucking business or whatever, you know, but he was very quick to share. Cause yeah, he's like, oh, this, I was I'm like, no, pulling on this kid's heart it was kind of a heartbreaker for me. Cause I was like, oh yeah, I became like a Titan fan. So yeah. I was yeah. like, son of a bitch. I'm telling you guys, if you watch the way this guy uses his powers and the thing, the character, the thing used his powers in any way, shape or form like that, people would be seriously fucked up. <laughs> uh, I wrote this down as a note, which we already talked about, but I said, Mark sucks as a liar. I said, he should just avoid the relationship. Yeah, Mark's not good at But lying. he was selfish because he wanted that. He, and he kept wanted wanting the it. And, you know, it's like, no, just end it, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very true. Um, I put here that Black Samson was right, but I'm not really sure uh, what I was referring to on that. Uh, again, I have the another team, Maybe. Maybe so that they were the teamwork. They, that they, yeah, that they, they didn't work. They weren't working together because that's when he starts showing up, like when he's like, "Pull up the battle plan," right? Or pull up the battle, right? And he was like, "Hey, you could have stopped, you know, this from happening right here, right here. <laughs> you know, duplicate could have made more of herself to kind of block the like, the entrance." Yeah, and, and then you have I have here. So I put, uh, real quick, Black Samson was an original Guardian right. of the Globe, but he lost his powers and. I don't know who he's supposed to be. I'm not sure either. I don't know who Black... I mean, but the name Black Samson, it kind of reminds me of, like, Doc Samson. I'll yeah. Like, could it be a Doc Samson kind of character? We don't really see what his power is. Maybe just strength. Strength. Type being just strong and durable. Strength. Yeah. Right, right. Of course, uh, your favorite Rex is quick to tell him, oh, maybe you would have been if you hadn't lost your powers. You <laughs> yeah. know what I mean? And he like just I, is a real cocksucker. Like man. I said, but the lines that he says and how he delivers, oh, I laugh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, see Rex. Fucking like, Rex explode. Like, but the guy sucks. He sucks. He's a dude, man. He just sucks. But he makes me laugh so much with his fucking comments. Yeah, I mean, he, the, he even tells me, he's like, hey, we tried our best. Like, we were there. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, that's it. That's yeah. all you got to like say. For him, like, if a win's a win, you know? He yeah. doesn't care how it's won. He's just like, <laughs> yeah. You know, that's terrible. Now, how about this, Double A? So that fight with Titan and Machine Head and, and Battle Beast and the Grand Smith is brutal. But early on, we see who's there. Omni Man is Omni floating Man. up above, yeah. and even before yeah. Mark goes to Black, he blinks his eye. And he goes, "Dad," he him. Yeah. and he sees him, and he's he never intervenes. He never comes down to help them. I would like to have seen him and Battle Beast go oh, at man. it. Yeah, uh, that would have been a um, hell of a fight. I think Omni Man, Man would have kicked his ass. Oh yeah, I don't know. I don't know how bad he would kick. I think he would kick his ass. But that that squad, that hit squad, was doing pretty well, faring their own against the Guardians of the Globe. Uh, but again, I think I think we're meant to believe like, oh, it's because their teamwork was pretty shitty or whatever, you know. So, yeah, and that's kind of what it is. It, it's supposed to show that. Yeah. yeah. So coming up next, we kind of have like our next episode, which is like uh, Mark is kind of on the fence again about being a superhero, and he wants to make things yeah. good with Amber, uh, his buddy. Uh, William. William is going to go see his uh, uh, love interest, this guy at a college. They go there, and when they're there, they encounter this yeah, guy. Yeah, so so Mark's kind of like, you know, this will be good, you know, for me and Amber to kind of see, and maybe we'll go and we'll start building a life together. And mm -hmm. it, it just goes downhill. Oh, yeah. <laughs> bad. Super Real bad. bad. And we meet a character named uh, D.A. Sinclair, who's voiced by none other than The Flash. Uh <laughs> Ezra, Ezra Miller, Miller. the yeah. Ezra Miller Flash from the uh, Zack Snyder uh, Justice League and, and also the, the Whedon Justice League. But uh, Ezra Miller is, is that voice there. So, again, another great uh, voice pull here. Shortly after this, we see the uh, changing of the guard of uh, uh, Robot and the whole story with the, the Mahler twins and what he was up to, stealing DNA and things like that. And he's getting a body created because apparently he's some type of, like, Krang... Yeah, it's nasty. I don't know it's what real happened gross to him. Drawn, yeah. It really doesn't tell his origin whatsoever of how he's like that, but he's he's little mm -hmm. and he's living in this he's, fucking He's looking like Myron from Basket Case yeah. and shit. I'm like, 
And it's funny because the Mahler twins are like, oh, you lost the coin toss. You got to touch him and all that. Yeah. He's, like, they're, he's, he's like in some type of fluid also. And when he breathes air, he says it that air is toxic burns. to him. Like it burns his lungs. Um, yeah. But using Rick Splode's DNA, he gets a new body. And when he does, he becomes. Yeah, so we find out what happened because like earlier in the episodes, you know, he grabs Rex like on the shoulder and Rex is like, oh, you know, like, what the fuck? What did you do? Yeah. And then you see like he has like a little vial of blood and you're just like, what the fuck? That's weird. Yeah. You know, and just because he's using, you know, Rex's body because somehow he really likes Monster Girl. Mm -hmm. Like he feels like something for her and so he wants him to grow a 14 year old rex yeah <laughs> you know? yeah because she saw monster girl look like she was into rex right you know because she uh, monster girl is like she looks 14 but she's supposed to be like 24 yeah like her real age is like 24 25 and for some reason i i would never use this power uh every time she uses her power she gets younger yeah she gets uh, younger like by the week or by the day whatever it is and I was like, man, that sucks. It's like almost like Rogue's power, yeah. You know where you can't touch anyone. You know, I was like, Monster Girl. I was like, I would never turn into a fucking monster. Fuck that. You know. Yeah. At one point, she says to him, uh, to Robot, she's like, I can't do three training exercises in a week because if I do, by the end, it'll be changing my diapers. Like she's like, yeah, it deages me. You know. So uh, it was kind of an interesting twist that's to the ugly. power. Yeah. That's yeah. Ugly. Um, but once the robot becomes Rudy, so he goes from Zachary Quinto's oh, yeah. voice, he says he's going to be called Rudy now, it becomes Ross Marquand's voice, who we also know as uh, Aaron, right, from The Walking Aaron, Dead, yeah. and the Red Skull. The Red and, Skull and, from and, Avengers uh, Endgame. And, and Infinity War? Infinity War, Infinity I'm sorry, War. Infinity War. And yeah. Endgame, I think he comes to the Yes, he does, he does actually, yes, 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 yes. So yeah, because obviously Hugo Weaving did not come back from... Uh, Captain America, the first Avenger, to continue to be the Red Skull, we got Ross Marquand, who did a great job. He's a wonderful, if you ever look up Ross Marquand, he's a wonderful impressionist as well. And I and i Aaron's really grown on me in The Walking yeah, Dead he's as fine. well. He's a good character. He's been there yeah. a long time now. Yeah. So um, but also the former leader of the Guardians of the Globe, the Immortal, is also voiced by Ross Marquand. So he pulls right. double duty yeah. uh in this show, and he's not the only one. Whoever it is that voices Donald, is like Cecil's number two. He voices somebody else also. Uh, oh, I wrote okay. that down. I forgot. I was like, oh, somebody. I forgot about Donald. Yeah, I forgot about Donald. He yeah. looked like a real scumbag, but ended up being uh, no, kind of brave. Yeah. He was kind of brave. He was, for sure. Yeah. yeah. He, he 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 tried his hand at Omni Man. Sure. Yeah. Uh, and it was like certain death. It was like suicide, pretty much. Yeah, so. But he stood his ground. Yeah, he stood his ground, which is pretty badass. Um, so, uh, I, I mean, we're pretty much close to the end here. Um, Unless there's something that you, that I missed. No, so like throughout the gang, you know, like on top of Mark kind of like trying to find his way in his personal life and being a hero, you know, Debbie just more and more she starts becoming suspicious of mm -hmm. Nolan. Like Nolan, mm -hmm. like for the first time, she doesn't feel like he's being honest with her, and he's weird. He's acting weird every time. Ever since Mark became like uh, had powers, he's just he's fucking weird. Yeah, uh, he's not the same guy that she fell in love with, and. It turns out to be, yeah, it's, it was no one was ever in control of Omni Man. It was all him. Mm -hmm. um, he, the origin is completely different. He tells them that, yeah, well, Viltrum, mm -hmm. Viltrum, okay, Viltrum, the planet he comes from, had a major civil war where it was kind of like the the survivor, uh, strong. What was that apocalypse thing? Uh, yeah, uh, the, only the strong survive. Only the strong survive. Survival, survival of the fittest. Survival yeah. of the fittest, and it's a long civil war, brutal civil war, where he says finally, like the last of us that emerged, you know, the mightiest of us, you know, started controlling Viltrum and sent out people. Yeah, uh, to other planets to put them under Viltrum's command. Yeah, you know, and it, it's an empire. It's almost like uh, the Scrolls in the Cree, almost yes. that kind of planet. You know, yes. And you know, Nolan signed up right away when he was able to. He signed up in the military force, and they gave him Earth. Mm -hmm. Earth was his to kind of get ready for the empire. You know, and you know what? I don't blame him. A lot of times it's like. Earth does fucking suck, you know. We're just we are a war people. We're a warrior people race, you know. And he was like, "Yeah, this planet will be great under subjugation, under part of the yep. Viltrum Empire." And it just breaks everyone's heart. It breaks Debbie's heart, you know. Mark, uh, yeah, 
you know, Cecil couldn't believe it, you know, that this guy is a, you know, he's the evil, he's an evil guy, and Cecil's trying to prepare his damnedest to try to stop him, but there has been, like, no known record of what can hurt Omni-Man. Omni-Man has no weaknesses, and we get the full exploration of what Superman can do if he was fucking twisted and evil. We get the full version of with Omni-Man, <laughs> you yeah. know, and it's fucking brutal. He, you know, like all of a sudden he just does not care about human life anymore. No. And who? It was like he got the a chance lot to of cut people loose. Die. Yeah. yeah, he got the chance to cut loose, and he took it, man. And, and there was no one that stopped him. There's nothing that can stop. They him. threw everything at him: bombs, alien monsters that they had ice because they were secretly trying to yeah. save up stuff in case to see. Yeah. And I because won't... Cecil always had pretty much new. It was Omni Man, but it was like he didn't know why he snapped. And, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And it almost, uh, you know, not to not to bring out the Batman fans or whatever, but it almost put into perspective the whole. <clears throat> oh, if he had prep time, he'd figure it out. I'm like, it seemed like Cecil was always kind of thinking about things. Yeah, he was, and he threw everything he had, and it, it just didn't matter. Nothing. It was, like, it didn't he was matter. like, no, this is only going to stop him for like two minutes. But yeah, maybe we can try to reach Mark before. You know? Yeah, he's hoping he's banking on Mark. You know, invincible to be able to be the one to possibly stop Omni Man, uh, and nothing could be further from the fucking truth. No. Because I don't know if it was a little bit double A of like it was hard to fight his dad. Uh, I think that was that was definitely a factor, but I think it was a small factor it's, because it's it a just, betrayal of everything, you know. From Nolan just pretty much saying that no, Debbie doesn't really mean a whole lot to him, you know, and you know him telling Mark like, you know, you're gonna live for forever. These people are nothing, you know. Yeah. Forget about them, you know. Right. And he's saying kind of like what a bad race we are, almost, you know. Yeah. You know, this is what you're fighting for. You know, we can be so much better under a Viltrum rule. And me and you can be together. And, yeah. you know, and Mark's just not having it. That human side of him is just like, no, we can't yeah. do this. I, I mean, this is my favorite kind of moment for Mark, though, because he stands up to Omni Man. He and he really brings up his mom a lot. Like, how can you be like that? Like, like, towards, like that? towards mom. You know, like, that's 20 mom. years, but for Nolan in 20 years is nothing. Right. 20 right. years is like what? Like, Maybe a week, you know, yeah, like, or or like a, a a waiting at a a line at a restaurant yeah. for your food, and he's just pretty much like, no, I know you love her, I know you love mom, I know you love me, and he's pretty much telling him he's like, I not in the way that you think though, he's yeah. like, no, it's not, it's in small scale. There's a much yeah. larger scale, and he's like, these people's lives are just insignificant. You know what I mean? And how about that pilot that gets ejected out of the plane? Yeah. And uh, yeah. Yeah, you just get to see him pretty much just grab his head Ooh, and crush yeah. it right onto and, oh, his man. son to show he's like he's like if he dies now or in fifty I, years, what is it? Again, matter? my my heart kind of sank because I was like, golly, you know, you you do fight for this long for so long, trying to help people, and then all of a sudden you're just like it didn't matter, nothing yeah. ever mattered. But it seemed like long to us, but to him it's like the time it takes to brush your teeth. Exactly. You know I mean? like, but for him know? to just like just crush the dude's head and. Yeah, you know, like boom, you and, know, like wow. And you know? uh, I like when Mark stands up to him and he says, "What do you want me to do? Do you want me to betray the people that I know and that I love for a bunch of people I don't even know, a bunch of aliens I never yeah. even met?" And then he's like, "It's your duty as a as a Viltrum." And he's like, "Fuck Viltrum." He tells him, "He's like, fuck yeah. Viltrum." You know? yeah, he he's like, "I don't know anything. them or them." Yeah. Right. And he tries to fight for a little bit, a very little bit. It's very. And little. then it goes. It is one fucking Omni -Man, sided man. Yeah, Omni Man is just so overwhelming and he is extremely confident in his abilities and he's like do you even think even when mark gets licks in it's like it doesn't do nothing, nothing. i'm like are you fighting with full power or is it that situation that we've talked about before where it's like you know they say the, the men don't have the heart to go against a general <sighs> after you know a while I, mean? I, like, I think you would have to do full power because it's just like golly this but by that time what did he have left from getting his probably ass had kicked? anything because it looked like he was hitting him as hard as he could fucking yeah, hit he, could. And he was like yeah this let's was see what of, you can really take yeah, you know yeah and uh yeah, it's brutal man it's just brutal man. yeah and, you know like he's like there was a line that got me, and I can't really remember it verbatim, verbatim, but it was come, something like, you know, Omni Man tells him, like, you know, like, like who's going to be there for you? Who's going to, like, who are you going to love? And he's like, you know, you, yeah. Dad. You know, that line got me. I, I, I didn't can't really... remember what it exactly is, but it got me where I was yeah. like, oh. 
Yeah. You know, and it's like that you line know, crushed you, me, Devil. You, you yeah, know? that's exactly the line I think. I wrote that down this time on my second time. And I, I heard it the first time, but I kind of couldn't understand him because he was kind of like he's coughing up blood and he's this is after he's I had just, some titles on. So yeah, you know, for yeah. me, I, you know I, this is at the point where he's just uh, wailing on him and he's wailing and, on him. he's and, knocking yeah, his fucking teeth out. Only man is full of vulture my, you know, just trying to instill him like you know, he's not even thinking Mark's his son anymore. It's mm. just you know, like just join me. You know, blah blah blah. And, you know, me and you, we both love our dads. Yeah. So you know, if our dads did that, we'd just be that. Yeah. You know, that was we'd going through my brain too. Dad, you know, you know I mean? like, yeah. oh, you know, but I love you. You know, I, you're my dad. I love you. Yeah. You know? I think even though he knew that he would try to fight his dad, I don't think it ever crossed Mark's mind that he would, would try you? to kill his dad. You? No, I wouldn't no. either. You know. No. And and that's what he says. He says, "What would you? What do? You, where would you have? What are you going to have in in five hundred years when everyone's dead?" And he says, "That's what he says." I wrote it down. He says, "I'd have you, Dad. I'd, I'd have, have you. you." And then that's when you kind of see the first kind of maybe a possible kink in Omni Man. Yeah, where he remembers the story, seeing Mark hit the home run. Yep. And even then, she tells him. Debbie tells him. You know, look at look at his face. That's look at him. Like made. this is we yeah. made. It. And she and he's like at first he's like I could be doing so much more right now. I could be seeing. Or I could be watching from above the sky. There's a little human side that it doesn't exist in it, but a human right. side that was like he, he got proud. Of, yeah, of being there with him. He let know? a moment in, and uh, and then you just see him. He doesn't get beat. He just takes off. Yeah, but uh, you know, from before that, you know, just demolishing mark and then you know the whole subway scene you know that's fucking brutal that's one of the most brutal man. uh because you know they're you know alan moore kind of established this with with miracle man damn it damn it sorry damn guys it. we did it again oh wait why don't you listen to 59 seconds uh did we miss a big piece ah, shit. <laughs> we might have a lot of show missing uh -oh. guys. we'll see we'll come right back this will probably be our last block guys there's no commenting right now so we're going to go right back to it uh, especially since it looks like we're missing a piece here. Ah, uh, shit. That's a uh, very unusual. I hope that wasn't a, a big piece of the show that got got skipped. <laughs> that would be bad. Um, but um, apologies if you're listening to on, on audio. We'll come right back in. Oh well, maybe there it's processing. Oh, okay, okay, there it is. Okay, is. sorry guys, give us a second here to allow that to process. Uh, no comments in the queue right now. Uh, I don't think. Let me double check. Oh, uh, we did have Gabe come and say. Yeah, he uh, said uh, Adam Eve was his favorite. Battle Beast and Mark. Okay, great. Uh, those are his three those favorites. Are those are good, yeah. good characters. Uh, uh, let's hear six. yours. Let's hear yours. Okay, so uh, it, mine was Omni Man and Titan and Cecil. Those are my favorites. I, I really okay. dug those characters. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah. Uh, I Mark, liked, I really didn't get off to Mark. He was, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. It was, it was right. I liked uh, Adam Eve. I liked the Mahler twins, um, and. Um, it probably would have been Omni Man too. Although that last episode is really like, I mean, you know, it's, it's dark brutal. the whole way. It's brutal. You know yeah. I mean? It's definitely dark. Yeah. Cecil was a very cool, strong character. I like I Cecil. Thought. Cecil um, was a very badass character. He doesn't have, you know, he, he's not in that realm. He would need, you know, that he can't fight these guys one on one. But but he's got the brain, so I'm sure he's trying to think, you know, think his way out. You yeah. know what I mean? So uh, I like throughout. You know what I mean? He's kind of doing the moves where he's like, yeah, let me, you know, uh. You know, they're talking about the teleporter, and he's like, "Well, we're gonna need it for us or whatever." Like, yeah. it's like he's like, "Where do you think he's coming yeah. next?" You know what I mean? He's just like trying to buy time. Cecil trying to buy kind time. of has that, like heart to heart moment too with with Omni mm -hmm. Man. Like, you know, I trust you. You know, mm -hmm. um, I tried getting you into the Guardian so many times, and you know, I <laughs> and yeah. you're, you're this fucking dude that's trying to conquer the world. You're not even like a good guy. You you're just pretending. You know, it's like golly, yeah. The tailor, Mark's friend, was uh, was pretty uh, pretty impressive as well. Like, he was a pretty cool character. So I know we're having a little bit of, of, of weird uh, recording issues here on the audio side, but we're going to try to just uh, try to muscle through it and get a new piece cut here, a, a final piece. Uh, if anybody is listening on audio, we apologize for that. Well, you can see all of everything on YouTube. You can see everything on YouTube, and if we end up missing anything out of that, then uh, uh, it won't be spoiled for you. So... <laughs> You'll hear the rest uh, right now. Um. So yeah. So. What the, uh, oh wow. Okay. Yeah, that's it. Okay. We're having a, sorry, guys. We're having a real issue on the uh, on the audio side of the um, 
uh, recording uh, part. So I don't know that we're going to be able to get that part in. It's uh, not letting us record anything else um, for some reason. Uh, let us hang out for a second here. Um, Double tell me a little bit more about um, you know, just your kind of final thoughts on that. Not final thoughts, but your thoughts on, on that big end scene where you know they're going through the subway and yeah so like again it kind of uh reminded me like of uh the miracle man stuff that he put you know like like if someone like superman or miracle man tried catching someone you know their ribs would break so right i was like thinking that right away you know mark's hands are kind of like this like yeah break but it looked like he's the reason why that people are getting shredded apart because his hands they're running into like these at that speed pieces of metal mm-hmm. which is mark's hands you know and mm-hmm. you're just like mark put like stop put your you know put your arms down you know yeah and, and more and more he's just getting bloodier and bloodier and bloodier and you know it's just like holy shit you know it did remind me of miracle man again you know of issue 15 where just the brutality because omni man just does not care he does not give a shit. yeah i mean this is him completely unhinged yeah they even draw him with like the red bloodshot eyes well yeah i think after i was because immortal was oh pushing that's his, right his yeah fucking oh we didn't, eyes in, we didn't even know? mention that about how that immortal, yeah, his revival immortal gets revived like again cecil is throwing everything he can at him and it's not him it's the mauler twins that try to re- uh, revive but yeah, somehow uh, they dug up the body, and it was just like, what the hell, you know? Yeah. Uh, guys, we're back on the recording right now. Uh, for those that are listening to us on audio, we're having some major difficulties with uh, Anchor that we're using to record. Uh, we apologize for that. If this ends up sounding a little choppy, uh, we're going to direct you guys over to the YouTube to yeah. watch the, uh, yeah. the complete and uncut, which will be out later tonight. Uh, also, it'll be up on Facebook Live. Uh, not Facebook Live, but it'll be up on Facebook in our video section for a while. Um, it won't, you know won't be up there too long, but it'll be up there, you know, long enough for you to watch it. And for those of you listening on audio, I'm going to do my best to clean this up and get a, get a full uh, piece here for us to use um, to end out the episode here again. But we're talking all things invincible. We're right at the end here. The yeah, so heart wrenching. Yeah, so uh, we see that Omni Man is not the good guy mm-hmm. that we thought he was. He is a complete uh, villain. He's from a war planet uh, that's trying to get every planet they can under their subjugation. Yeah. Uh, you know, and he's trying to get Mark to be with him. Uh, Mark is like, you know, Earth is my home. This is the only home I've known. Yeah. You, know, you mom, uh, you know, I'm not, I don't even know this other planet that you're talking about. It's a difficult you concept know? that yeah. he kind of presents him with, you know, uh, Nolan does, a, a you know, you, you raised me to be this good guy like you, you're, that's all you've ever done is save people. Now right. all of a sudden you're saying that human life is worthless. You know, it's like, what the fuck? Right. You know, right. it's like, and, and you, like you said, that major betrayal of like, this it's a huge betrayal that you looked up to yeah. and that raised you. And, yeah. like, and as you've known your whole life as a hero is now truly, now you're telling him the ultimate that, villain. Yeah, he's telling you, he doesn't give a shit about your mom. He doesn't give a shit about human life. Uh, you know, it's better for the planet to be under subjugation mm-hmm. uh, than let them keep going. And it's just like, whoa, where did all this come from? Like, how can he just change just like that? You right. know, it's a twisted, twisted version. You're just like, wow. Yeah. You know? Yeah. There's a great comment here from uh, Gabe Flores. Since I, uh, you know, we are, we're trying to get him in. Um, uh we're going to in this last block, but Gabe did say, he says, I see Mark as an underdog. He's in no way ready, uh, but he keeps trying while messing up his own personal life. A respectful attempt at being a hero. But yeah, he says he kind of sucks at being a hero. He sucks bad at totally being a agree. hero. And again, this would be like his year one. It's like yeah. he's not done From it that, that long. A- alien invasion where he freezes to helping Titan yeah. and, you know, being manipulated by Titan. And, and they kind of give you a time frame because they talk about like, they talk about when, the first fight we see Nolan in, and then they talk about that. They say it's been about from the time he got his powers to where the, it ends about eight months. Yeah. So yeah. it's not even a full year that Mark's been a superhero. Uh, and again, you know, he's, he's not that great at it, which kind of makes sense too. No one would probably he's a be a teenager that with no training. He's just out there because he thinks he's invincible. 
uh, and you know, not knowing that there are still people that can kick her ass. Yeah. You know, so, yeah. and he even questions it. He questions being a hero at times when he's like, and in my mind, I was thinking, I was like, you're questioning it already. You haven't even, this well, is the thing you again, wanted to like, you haven't had it that teenager, long. Though, right. Because, you know, teenagers, we can't really make up your mind when you're a teenager. Yeah. You know, you're like, well, I don't need to do this. I don't need to do that. You know, right. it's not until you're in your late twenties, probably when you're certain that this is what I need to do, you know? Yeah. So yeah, I mean, it's a typical teenager that is like, well, you know, yeah, I want to give up. You yeah. know, I shouldn't be doing this. Maybe I should just give up. And know? it's kind of interesting because it's like, here it is again, the kind of great power comes with. You have at that early age, and you yeah. have to make that decision. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we, may have lost, we may have lost you guys. Yeah, maybe there. it's Omni Man. Maybe he's, uh, I was going to say, yeah. so is, or did we use a. Oh, we use too, too much copyrighted names uh, too, ah, maybe. too many times. Yeah, maybe Robert so, Kirkman's here. Uh, I was going to say, right, I, I talked too much shit earlier. You know, I mentioned Jeff Bezos and all that. So. <laughs> um, but, yeah, um, I don't know, Double A. I mean, you know, like I said, it's a brutal, brutal ending. It's a, it's a terrible betrayal. There's a little bit of an epilogue. You know, you see him. And that's what's kind of funny, too. So, like, you know, he talks about uh, – he talks to Alien. Mm -hmm. Alan the alien, mm -hmm. and you know, he tells him too about wow, there was a, a Viltrium that kind of just took off. That's weird. Yeah. Uh, you know, he's talking about the coalition of planets, mm -hmm. and uh he he says he's gonna tell them about uh Mark, uh, you know, about him being Viltrium, but you know, him being a good guy rather than a, an asshole. Right. Uh and then he's like, Mark's thinking about giving up, and you know, he's like, Yeah, you know, the world doesn't need me, and then they give us all these <laughs> scenarios where yeah yeah he's he's still gonna be needed you oh, know yeah it's like oh yeah shit, definitely a lot of shit that's gonna bring it on in season two where you're just like okay you're not gonna be retired sorry yeah you we know? see the martians and mars with the sequids tied we see, in the mauler twins yeah, yeah. Um, cecil shows them that they're still working on stuff it looks like some <laughs> yeah. weapons and they're trying to again work on the immortal so it's like maybe he's not done yeah yet. and he's um, not done the immortal's not done yeah you know, i mean hence so. the name i guess immortal so. yeah uh, which is kind of cool too. His before his second death, uh, which both were very brutal or whatever. Yeah. We get a little glimpse that he's been like a warrior for a long yes, time. Yes, he so has. Yeah, that's kind of interesting. A little again, that's where it kind of brings up the Vandal Savage gave. If you, you know, if you kind of you're still here, you know, what do you think? Where do you think Immortal is? I told Sam that he's uh has to be a crossover of Vandal Savage and Superman. You mm -hmm. know, uh, if, you're, if you're still carrying over the DC stuff, you know, right. Right, yeah. which it seemed like that's where Kirkman that, mainly well, yeah, borrowed heavily from. Weird, right? So. How they always make fun yeah. of DC. Yeah. Which is funny too, because like you know, there's. I mean, the, the boys make the fun boys, of DC, yeah, and right. now you know, so it's like dynamite and image. Yeah, you know. Although you could kind of say like in in uh, in the boys, like what like teenage kicks was kind of like X Men, I guess, or, or was it the other one? G, G Men. The G Men was. Yeah, like, the G Men were X Men. Were I think teenage kicks were still Teen Titans. Teen Titans, yeah. right? So. Right. <laughs> It's kind of such an obvious, you know, like, uh, I guess, you know, to take the shots at it. Those but again, ones. that's, you know, the Alan Moore influence, you know, I would, again, highly recommend Miracle Man Watchmen. Yeah, you know, Watchmen, the complete definitely. destruction definitely. of the comic superhero, you know, right there. Yeah. You know, so. If these are the, if those are your kind of superhero yeah. stories that are definitely darker yeah. and definitely uh, got some adult elements to them, that's definitely but definitely where they're at. see him now we got another guy who's been around for a while but for me and you uh who barely been watching now we got another version of a kind of a superman but yeah. a twisted version of superman for again sure. you know we got you know like miracle man he became twisted mm -hmm. uh omni man uh very twisted uh you know we got all these superheroes that are usually these weird supermans that are twisted what do you think about Omni Man now in yeah. our playing field. Right. I mean, you know, right away. We had a great discussion in our group chat, you mm -hmm. know, about like the, you know, him and Homelander, you know, who it would Yeah. <laughs> right away that came out uh, was like, oh, people compared him right away to Homelander, which technically Omni Man might be older, an older character. You know what's funny? Uh, the comic book version of Homelander kind of sucked. Okay. Uh, I think Anthony Starr has done so Pumped much to yeah, oh yeah. really reverse the Homelander image yeah. to where he is now. I, I, I Homelander in the show 
is like almost like a Negan for me where like, it's like a love to hate. Um, You know, although now I just full on like Negan, but uh, in the comic book, I just remember always disliking Homelander. See, that's what I mean. Like Homelander was like, seemed like a bumbling idiot in the comic book. And, And, you know, like the way I see the way he is on the show is kind of like the way Omni man, was presented to us you right. know, just that dangerous this sharper sharper killer kind of yeah yeah has, welcome back jason Appreciate that you has back, no man. remorse you right. know about anything you know yeah so, so people how, right away brought those comparisons so up. i was gonna say yeah. so how does it feel like now you know we got superman but then we got these characters now of omni man of homelander what do you think about like kind of like where people are kind of taking their versions of Superman's now and kind of twisting them up to see, you know, it's kind of, again, like the Alan Moore style mm-hmm. of Miracle Man, where you kind of twist them up, where it's like, I'm God, yeah. and I can do whatever the fuck I want. Right. You know, what do you, what do you think right. about this? you think this is a good road comic book people are putting in? or Well, I think it's certainly a a dynamic that people have been interested in for a long time. Yeah, you know, it always seems Superman like... went dark, what if Superman went, you know, uh, but whatever. you know, it's like we said. There's like so many versions of a Superman, right? That every company kind of always has to do, you right. know. And now we're getting this. It, I don't know. It just seems weird. It seems weird yeah. that this is the road we keep going in. Well, I know? think I think that what it's kind of saying to me, Double A, is like is like when you when you kind of you know you elevate someone to that mm-hmm. status mm-hmm. and you put that that uh, quote unquote God on that pedestal, it's like you know how are they going to be? Again, who watches the Watchmen? Yeah, I mean now uh-huh. who, who's you know you're putting all your faith into yeah. this, but but what what happens when that thing turns it's, out? To it's be kind of like the Lex Luthor thing, right? Good. Like like right. you know the Luthor series was kind of like about that. Like he, you know, everyone saw Superman as his hero, mm-hmm. but he saw it like as mankind's like slow progress to being a downfall, right? You know, of worshiping this god. When you shouldn't be worshiping, you should be worried about him. You should yeah. be ready for him. You know? Yeah, I think it even goes as far as to say, I don't know if it's in that series or it's somewhere else where I read it, but it was saying that, like you know, uh, the people become weak. They're like they're reliant yes. on you. They know they, you're coming. And that you know was a Luther. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. They, yeah. yeah. They, they yeah. never, they never have to do. They never have to do for themselves. It just so. seems so weird. It's like everyone tried to copy a Superman, but now it was like now everyone's doing this version of a Superman. Like an where evil. It's an evil. Yeah. Or, I mean, even DC has even done that. Yeah. You know, with uh, I think the Ultraman and then Injustice, Injustice Superman. Yeah. You know, so so it, it's a weird. It's weird how we're we're getting these kind of like weird, like twisted versions of Superman and Omni Man now is like. The new guy, you yeah. know. <laughs> Although to me, I would say, um, you know, they're slightly they're 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 different in power. They're different in, in obviously, you know, convictions. And I still, you know, for me, I say Superman still comes in and still. Oh yeah, Superman, you know, Superman's house. always going to be the guy <laughs> yeah. for us. For I'm sure, sorry. for sure. He's uh, that ultimate light. That ultimate. But it seems good, like. You know? But it seems like now to you, like the origins, you know, like mm-hmm. Omni Man's like an alien, right? You know, oh like yeah, Superman. Yeah, alien. for sure. I mean, I yeah. just, I just think that that concept is so. Uh, like the movie too that they just came out, that Bright Burn movie. Yeah, Bright you know, Burn. Yeah, the, that's the, another one. The concept yeah, is so interesting one. to play with. It is like, very you know, interesting. What, what happens when you have a Superman without the Kents? When you have a and, Superman, and we that's, did an episode you know, of the Red Sun. The Red Superman. Sun, yeah. yeah. What happens when you have a Superman? Like, like all these factors help to create the greatest hero of our time. But then there's there's when you take out those factors, it doesn't take much to have him driven the other way. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like I said, yeah. for all we know, Krypton could have been a, a war torn planet that well, was helping. Obviously, it conquest, did have a military you know? because Zod mm-hmm. was around. Right. You know, so obviously there was some shit going on right. like that. You know. You know, and all you need is an extremist like Zod to be the one that influences yeah. Superman versus yeah. him, and then it's like it's a whole nother it's a whole nother world. So I think it's uh I think it's fine when you have these concepts, but I think it's it's also too you gotta remember the other end where it's like you've got people like in a sense like the boys, maybe not necessarily Billy, but like a guy like Huey who you know, again, has this conviction. It sounds like we have an invincible. We've got Mark with this, like, you know, this isn't the right thing to do. You know what I mean? There's always someone to, to counter even a God's power, so to speak. You know what I mean? Whether but it, it, it's just, it, it is interesting that now we have Omni Man now. Yeah. In this discussion. So. Yeah, for sure. <clears throat> for sure. For us, he's, he's definitely uh, in that talk now. Uh, one more to, to add there. And I think that it's one that we could tell people, 
to go check out and uh worth watching worth having a discussion about uh it makes it super fucking fun and interesting to to just discuss because you're like holy shit you know what i mean what is, what who is this guy and what is this guy and how how do you stop him and what would stop him i hope i don't know where it's going to go the story but i hope that it's not some like don't i hope it's not some rock some piece <laughs> of his own planet that ruins him because that was never you know it, it just seemed too convenient it's a convenient way to beat him you got to have a better way to beat him if they're going to get beat you know what i mean um even if it's maybe his own conscience you know because that's kind of what happened with negan it was like nobody really i mean yeah rick beat him whatever but it was like they had to kind of break his spirit in a sense you know what i mean um as opposed to just killing him and then only for him to kind of turn it around so mm -hmm. yeah but uh great fucking series i loved it i loved re-watching it, it it was good guys it's only eight episodes about mm -hmm. 40 minutes a piece so 45 48 minutes a piece check it out yeah and even if you do and right now you can watch it all right now and and if you don't watch it again until you watch it before season two let's say uh it'll be fun for you to watch then because yeah. when i watch it my second time around with fresh with with not fresh eyes, but with eyes that knew the ending now, I was like, oh, man, it made me pay more attention to Nolan's character and the things he said. And, the things and you he know did. what? Omni-Man is a really cool character. I'm glad I know about him now. Yeah. It, it, he really impressed me. I like the character of Omni-Man. Omni definitely. Yeah. Definitely definitely a guy to be put in that conversation with powerhouses. Big time. time. How is he yeah. going to weigh in and how is it going to yeah. go when, when these guys, yeah. are, were, were, if they were to all mix it up? So, um but shit, double A, that's pretty much all I have on the subject matter, unless yeah. you have anything else no, to no, add. No, no, Just say it was a really good series. Again, Robert Kirkman just proved that he's the golden goose for image right now. Mm -hmm. So and he leaves his leaves his own mm. kid looking like this. Like I'm the mm. man right there. And guys, for the audio listeners, I'm showing yeah. a, a figure here I got on Skybound, uh, which is an invincible uh character. Uh invincible is a figure. They got the bloody version and the regular version. Guys, go check those out on uh Skybound. They got some really cool shirts too, double A, if you get a chance to get out there. Okay. Not cheap though. I'm like, damn, 33 bucks are. a T. But yeah. yeah. Yeah, guys. So um that's all I got. Yeah. You know what I mean, I loved it. Guys, go check it out. Go watch Invincible on Amazon Prime. I can't say uh, anything more about it. I, I got double A to watch it so we could talk about it with you guys. And I think you enjoyed it. I yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah so I enjoyed it. Yeah. It had the factors I like, which is rewatchability and and um and if it was on a Blu-ray somewhere in a cool case, I'd definitely buy one. So for me, Invincible, man, there we go. Um, one last thing, guys. Uh, we still do have shirts for sale, $20 shirts. If you need one, uh, send us a message. Send, send me us. a message. Let yeah. me know your size. I'll let you know what we have and I'll let you know what colors. Uh, tomorrow, I'm going to be on uh, the Now Watch This podcast with Lucky and Joe. Uh, it is uh, going to record tomorrow. Here it is. Here's the tea. Here it is. Um, but uh, it's going to record tomorrow, but I don't know when it will be out. But yeah, when I know, yeah. I'll let you guys know yeah. um, for sure. I think we're going to have a cool conversation. I'm looking forward to doing that with them. Um, what else, Double A? Uh, the I boxing fight tomorrow, Mother's right. Day on Sunday. That's right. You know, treat your wives, treat your moms with uh, yeah. your, your sisters, know. if they're moms. Sisters, uh, yeah. Any mom. Any kiss mom them, there. hug them, send yeah. them a text, or write them, or give them that a call, a, a personal yeah, call, and just lot. say, yeah. hey, happy Mother's Day. Thanks yeah. for the stuff you do, because that's really awesome yeah. and really tough. Yeah. Um, what else? I think that's it, guys. Yeah, uh, yeah, like I said, yeah. uh, the teas are there. If you're not Don't watching. Don't treat it, your mom like Omni-Man treated Debbie. That's right. Please. Exactly. Exactly. Please. Don't do that. And guys, if you if you if any of this audio sounded weird or off or anything like that, I'll do my best to try to clip it together. But I don't know what happened. Yeah, um, that was weird. You get the full version on YouTube. I'll put that up tonight. Yeah. Too. It usually yeah. doesn't pop up till about three in the morning. But but once it actually pops up there and it lo fully loads in there, you can hear this episode and give us a subscribe button. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the little bell for the notifications. It really helps us out. We're trying to get up to hundred followers. We're we're not even at halfway yet. We're at forty seven. We're getting close. Um, uh, but so, uh, YouTube subscribers is where it's at for us right now. So we hope you'll help help us out there. Um, like John Belushi says in Animal House, it don't cost nothing. Don't cost nothing. There you go. Uh, guys, uh, I mean, that's it. Invincible, man. Yeah. Kick-ass show. Yeah. Uh, Double A, any final words? Uh, you know what? Like, again, it introduced me to a really new character I liked a lot. I mean, man, uh, Invincible was a really cool show. I'm really looking forward to season two. Definitely, definitely. We'll be doing uh, that, watching that, and, and looking out for that. 
uh, to come from us when it when it gets done. So for sure. Uh, well, guys, uh, there is one thing that we do like to say at the end of every yep. show, guys. We like to remind you. Um, if there's something that you want to do with your life, something that you maybe always loved and you wanted to pursue, uh, seize the day. Go do it. Now is the day. Mark had to wait for his powers to come. And, but once he did, he went right into the superhero and he was like, I've been wanting to do this. I'm going to do it. He, he seized the day. Maybe he shouldn't have, but he did. <laughs> um, but look at our friend here, our friend of the show, uh, Joe Martinez of the, um, now of the now watch this podcast with lucky and joe was a podcast fan and was a fan of our podcast and and has a lot of good opinions and a lot of good insights and he made a connection with someone and he sees the day and he made his own podcast and guys uh you know in order to do that you got to do you know like our our old pal and our old friend cap says you got to do whatever it takes um it's going to take effort. It's going to take time. You know what I mean? Like, you know, look at Mark. He took a bunch of ass whoopings as invincible, uh, leaving us to think maybe not so invincible or whatever. Uh, and like, like I said, look at Joe. Joe had to go get a mic. He had to go get, uh, you know, uh, uh, make a new friend in person. You know what I mean? A, a guy he didn't really know. Uh, and they put together some, some really cool content that's got about three episodes in. So uh, they're on the path that we were on a year ago where yes, it was we like were. we were yeah. at one time, we only had a few yeah. episodes in and didn't know what our, we were doing and still don't know what we're doing and still experience technical difficulties, <laughs> but we're doing our best to see our way through it guys. So, uh, stay tuned for more on, uh, when the episode of now watch this will drop, uh, please like share, follow us, uh, at J A F N podcast on all uh, social media platforms like TikTok, Twitter, uh, Instagram. Uh, of course, find us on Facebook, like and subscribe our page, join our Facebook group called the Friday night faithful, where we have all these fun conversations about, yeah. uh, yeah. everything under the sun, including this, we're definitely going to be talking invincible. We were holding off cause we were uh, talking about it tonight, but now we'll be in there with our memes and everything else. Uh, you know, we promote all week long about the episode that we just did leading up to our next episode. Uh, but other than that, guys, that's it. Remember, do whatever it takes, seize the day, and um, that's it, huh, the boy? Yes, yeah, sir. Yeah, have a good weekend, guys. All right, guys, have a great weekend. Have a happy Mother's Day to all you moms happy Mother's out Day. there. Good night. Good night.